Dive kicks are probably one of the most important tools that Yun and Yang have. Now, as such, understanding all of your options with them is very important. There are three main types of dive kicks. Light kick dive kick, which doesn't move you very far. Medium kick dive kick, which moves you a little bit further. As you can see, Yun's front foot crosses the line in the middle of the screen from a neutral jump. Medium kick dive kick. And then the heavy kick version puts his back foot crossing that same line. So they all have different distances. There are three different types of dive kicks for every type of dive kick. And that is that they come off of three different types of jumps. Neutral jump, forward jump, and then super jump. All of these also have three different timings in them. So to look at this, we're going to be looking at the forward jump timing. Forward jump, light kick, dive kick, if you have done immediately, will put Yun's front foot right where the start of the red can is in the background. His hand is basically hovering over the steel beam in the background, almost touching the trash can. If you delay it slightly, Yun's foot is based Yun's front foot is basically right on the line on the ground. And if you do it very late, Yun's front foot goes in front of that. Now this all assumes that you're going neutral when you land. Now, however, dive kicks can be recovery and animation canceled. I have an entire other video on this, but I'll go over this quickly. We're going to do neutral jump, heavy kick, dive kick. When we do this, Yun's back foot just barely goes over the line in the middle, and Yun's foot does not touch the blue can in front of him. However, if we do a special, or if we do a normal, this pushes him back quite a bit. As you can see, His back foot doesn't even touch the line now, let alone be halfway through it. Same thing with specials. Now if we crouch instead, when we land, as in we go in the crouch block, his front foot now almost touches the can. So this is all done with immediate medium or heavy kick dive kick. So there are a few different things that can result in you moving closer to your opponent or further away. And depending on the character you're playing, either Yun or Yang, and the position that you're in on the screen, this can be useful to use. However, it takes quite a bit of brain power to constantly be thinking about what each action is going to do when also thinking about how it will react to or matter depending on what your opponent does if they're moving if they're pressing buttons etc etc so while this is important to know it's not something you need to think about on every single time that you're dive kicking unless you have a particular choice that you want to go for afterward So, before we get started, I put out a video before claiming that this was negative 7. And this is using data that a LUA script for the PC Final Burn Alpha version was showing me. And this is actually incorrect information. The reason for that is because, no matter what, when you hit or your opponent blocks something that is this high up, you still have to land before they can punish you. So this technically makes every dive kick that Yun has that goes blocked or hits negative three or better. This also means that the lower that you hit, the more plus frames you get. Hitting as low as I just did will end up being close to plus 10. Whereas hitting a little bit higher will end up being 
closer and closer to zero as you get up towards your opponent's waist. And if you're above their waist, like here, then you're going to be between negative three and zero from their shoulder going down to the middle of them. Now, why is it important that this is negative three? That's because the fastest moves in the game are all three frames. Chun's Crouching Light Punch, Throw, and Jump are all three frames. So this means that no matter what, as soon as you hit your opponent, even in a bad position, you can jump, or you're still able to throw or tech throw. So, in the worst situation, if your opponent blocks this, and you throw, while they're cornered, you move back. If you're mid-screen, you're both put into neutral. If you're successful, then your opponent gets thrown, and then you get Okizeme. Frame data for dive kicks for Yun and Yang aren't the same. Light kick for both characters is 6 frames. Medium kick for Yun is 8 frames, and for Yang is 6. And then for heavy kick, for Yun it is 6, and for Yang it is 8. This means that, for the most part, you want to be using your faster dive kicks. However, medium kick dive kick for Yun is great in a lot of different situations. Same thing, obviously, for Yang as his technically is faster than Yun's. So for Yun, his most used dive kicks are going to be light kick and heavy kick because of their startup. But medium kick does have quite a few uses, from ways that you can cross your opponent up, to set play options, to forcing situations where you hit low enough on your opponent, where you are safe, and all that other jazz. So just because the move is a little bit slower doesn't make it any worse, technically. They may have an extra frame or two to react, but in the long run it's not going to be all that big of a difference. However, depending on where you actually hit them, certain moves become usable. If your opponent parries you when you're this high, they have to wait until you land and then they can punish you. Basically as a trip guard punish. And the further down their body that you hit them, the harder it is to punish. So where I just hit Ken here is unpunishable. The reason for that is because I am so plus that even if he parries, I can block when I land before he can press any button whatsoever. Also, depending on your space and where you hit, as you can see here, our shadows are now touching. This means that against almost every character in the game, they are required to take a micro step before they can throw you. So even if they get hit or get blocked or block this at this particular distance or parry, they cannot throw you immediately without taking that forward step although the parry can be input as a way to get that forward step. So for this next part, we're going to have Yun be doing dashing up and then doing a neutral jump, light kick, dive kick. This gives us the technical worst positioning that you can have as far as negative frames go. So if I do a reversal dragon punch, which is three frames, Yun can land and block. But I can throw him. If I try to do super, that was not reversal timing, but if I try to do super, I am not going to be able to get it to work. Because in order to get this to work, even at reversal timing, you need to start inputting this as soon as you get hit, or block. And it doesn't hit anyway. So Yun is always safe after dive kick, technically. However, it puts you in that high-low throw situation, where he's forced to either jump, or he's forced to throw. He can also press buttons depending on where he hits you. But what happens when we start to throw? Throw break. 
Now, if we're in the corner, this pushes Yun back to a position, like I said before, where he gets to goaltend us. And if we're mid-screen, this pushes either you back as the defender towards the corner, or it pushes Yun back towards the corner. The person who texts the throw gets pushed back further. So if you tech Yun's throw, you'll get pushed back further. If Yun texts your throw, then he'll get pushed back further. But no matter what, on block and on hit, he's going to always be able to throw, no matter what. So let's take a look at what happens when our opponent neutral jumps afterward. Our throw doesn't work. Pressing a button doesn't work in some cases. You can stand jab him and reset him. You can standing heavy punch as well. And depending on the situation, it will or will not work. Well, what happens if he crosses us up or does a jumping uh, forward leg kick dive kick that hits, hits us in the head, right? And he re-jumps. Well, if he crosses up, obviously, just holding back, it puts me into proximity guard and then forces me to get hit. So he can re-jump for free, or he can throw, right? He can't technically press buttons because he's still negative three. Unless you press something that is slower than the Yun's four frame start up on his standing light punch, there's not really going to be much that uh, you can't beat him with. So, in this situation, if we throw, he jumps it. If we standing medium punch at the correct timing, it'll beat him. If we standing heavy punch, it'll also beat him, reset him, and force you into position where you can jump out. He has to make his way back in. And then standing light punch can also hit him while he's re-jumping as well. So in the worst case scenario where he's negative three, he has a very bad situation. However, he's not always going to be negative three. So now we're going to take a look at a situation where he's a little bit more plus frames, or I should say even. So in this situation, we're going to be taking a look at standing medium punch where he does a jump forward medium kick dive kick. If you get hit crouching in this situation, Yun can combo one, two, three, you know, get dash punch, get activate, whatever. If we block this and try to throw, we get beaten. Even if we, you know, throw the first single frame that we can, it won't work. So we have to throw and then hold back while we're throwing. Because if we just do throw, and we let go of back, we end up getting hit. Now if we press any button whatsoever, other than Dragon Punch, we end up getting hit. Now, if we do a late dragon punch, as in he's already hit us and then he's already started to fall from that hit to the ground, we end up getting hit. But if we block the, f the hit and then immediately dragon punch, we can reversal. So this means that 90% of the, the cast has to expend bar if they want to get out of this situation. Otherwise, you are forced to block or forced to parry this. And obviously, if you parry this situation, you're going to end up being able to hard punish. Oops. You can obviously go into super as well. EXDP, whatever it is that you want. But just to give you an idea, you can hard punish when you parry the dive kick at this particular height. 
where it's right about your chest. The parry window is about five frames. So this means that even in situations where Yun forces you to block in a situation where you will be comboed, as an example here, where you get hit pretty much as low as possible, right around the knee or below, where Yun is like plus five or plus ten, you can still deal with this, but only on parry. Now, parry has a five frame window against air attacks, right? So you have to be able to input what you want extremely fast, but because of how dive kick hits, and because of how low it's hitting, Yun is not going to be completely punishable. Only very specific things are going to punish. So it's only going to be three or four frame moves that can punish him. Because he's still on parry, only like negative three or four. So when we do crouching medium kick here, he can block it. If we do standing heavy punch, he's still airborne, so it'll hit him. But if we want a hard punish, we have to wait for him to land, right? Even if we want a super off of crouching light kick, this isn't going to work. Because he can block the crouching light kick, because he has to fall before it can hit him. So the only way that you can hard punish this is with a standing medium punch. And this requires you to parry it at a very specific time. Otherwise, as you can see before, if you don't parry it at the exact timing, the standing medium punch will hit him while he's airborne. Otherwise, it's going to fall into the standing medium punch startup animation where you can do medium punch, fierce punch, whatever. But not every character has this. So a majority of the situations that are going to occur, Yun is going to be safe even on parry. This means that he can freely do whatever he wants when he lands, he can throw, he can do whatever. Most of the cases is going to be where you parry it and he can either re-jump or he can throw. But in situations like this, the lower he is when you parry this, the harder it's going to be to punish, that is. And if you mistime it, you're just going to not hit whatsoever. If you parry it too low, this is not going to work either. So the parrying and the punishing, depending on the distance at which dive kicks hit you, is very inconsistent. So you have to figure out how defending against dive kicks works as whatever character it is that you're playing. And as Yun, you have to learn to abuse the fact that pretty much everyone can't do shit when you actually are getting your dive kicks correctly spaced. Whiffing with dive kicks is very hard to master, but it is an important tool. Dive kick trajectory changes where you're going to land. As you can see here, I used a medium kick dive kick and I landed right next to Ken by doing a super jump and then delaying my dive kick. But if I do an immediate super jump forward dive kick and do heavy kick, I end up landing right next to Ken as well. But if I delay, I hit Ken in the shin where I am now safe, like I've gone over before. So being able to manipulate where you land is quite important. This also opens up situations where you can uh, whiff at ranges where your choices become varied. You can go high, you can go low, you can walk forward for a throw, you can already be in range for a throw, and all that stuff. It can also allow you to change what your positioning is so that if your opponent reads that you're super jumping, you're not going to be predictable as far as you're always aiming for the same decisions. 
you always want to be hitting your opponent. Because if you always have the same decisions, and you're always aiming to combo your opponent off of a dive kick that hits them low, then you're going to be putting your opponent in a situation where they can more easily read when to parry. And that's never a good thing. So whiffing dive kicks is by far and away one of the most important tools. So first let's take a look at heavy kick dive kick from a full screen situation mid screen. Now if we neutral jump heavy kick dive kick, we're in a position where throw doesn't work. And Kara throw doesn't work. However, if we crouch when we land, Kara throw does work. So this is where the crouching stuff can make a difference. This also can put you in range of your opponent uh, being able to throw you though. So it's a risk reward. Now if we jump forward and we whiff, this puts us in perfect range for throw, option parry, as I did here, into down, and then one, two, three. You also have standing medium punch, standing medium kick, crouching medium kick, crouching light kick, light kick dash punch, and then obviously you have heavy punch and all that stuff. So there's a lot of different options, but... If we dive kick on our opponent, the earlier you're able to dive kick, the lower it will hit them. You're not going to whiff when you do a super jump forward from this distance, when you're specifically doing heavy kick dive kick. It's always going to hit. And you can delay it and force situations where you're hitting a little bit higher, like this one here. means that even though your opponent can block, it's still a situation where they're forced to block or they're forced to parry because Yun will hit them right around the chest area and he'll be able to do one, two, three, or he'll be able to do standing medium punch or crouching medium punch or whatever, crouching light kick, and beat the opponent's throw. So Yun has quite the advantage. Because if he does it early enough, he hits low enough that his opponent can't really punish. And if he does it at a different timing, he's not going to be able to combo, but it will punish the opponent if they decide that they want to do something other than block. So whiffing with heavy kick dive kick in this position is relatively easy, but it cannot be done off of a super jump. However, Jump forward heavy kick dive kick at a very late timing will hit your opponent. If you were to do this with the latest timing with medium kick dive kick, this whiffs. And this puts you in the same high-low throw situation that you would get from a jump forward whiff heavy kick dive kick. Now as I've already said, jump forward medium kick dive kick is going to whiff no matter what. But there's three different timings that you can do it at. Immediate which makes it so you can't even Kara throw. I just had to Kara throw three times in order to get into distance for it. Late, which means that you can throw immediately. And then sort of like an in-between, which you can tap forward and then you can Kara throw. Or you can forward throw or whatever. So, because you're out of range of throw distance for a lot of characters, this means that you can crouch and end up being in crouching like kick, like kick, dash punch distance. However, if you don't full crouch, you're not going to be in position for this. So that's another use for that. Now, when you want to use your jump forward, because you're always going to whiff, you're going to be at perfect distance for close to any medium kick. You're also going to be at a distance where crouching medium punch hits at max range. This means that standing light kick in some situations is not going to work. Again, unless you full crouch. So, there's a lot of different ways that jump forward medium kick that can be used, but as far as its usefulness, neutral jumping is probably one of its best variations. 
Neutral jump medium kick dive kick is an interesting beast in itself from very far away. As you can re-neutral jump and then combo afterward, either off of medium kick or heavy kick dive kick. That was a heavy kick example. So if you do in instant dive kick, instant dive kick, you'll whiff with double medium kicks. But if you delay, you'll hit at a safe position. However, the same thing works with heavy kick dive kick. And it allows you to go for one, two, three. Whereas the double medium kick dive kick on some characters does not allow for one, two, three. You have to go for crouch medium punch and a medium punch dash punch. Depending on how you dive kick and depending on if you instantly pre-jump matters a lot. Now if you delay your dive kicks correctly, you'll be able to do 1, 2, 3 afterward, but that requires you to land before you jump and not just hold up, as you get pushed back a little bit when you just hold up. So this is very important when it comes to doing light kick dive kick stuff. Now, this is one of those situations where knowing that instantly re-jumping can put you further away. So as we're going to see here, neutral jump, medium kick, dive kick, neutral jump, light kick, dive kick, doesn't put you in distance for the close standing medium kick, unless you wait until you land before you do your second dive kick. However, you can also crouch when you land and then do close to any medium kick because you will be in range unless your opponent walks back. So the idea that you can manipulate your decisions off the same thing with just these small decisions and these small variations can make using this setup very interesting. This same concept also applies to Zempo Tension. Or if you crouch, you're in Zembo tension range. However, if you don't, you're not. This means that you have to delay your light kick dive kick in order to land closer, in order to get your Zembo tension without the crouch. Or you delay your medium kick dive kick and then do instant light kick dive kick. Any variation of getting that slight bit closer is all that matters. Assuming that we do a second dive kick, we have a lot of choices. Now from this range, we can do a target combo. We can do crouching medium kick dash punch. You know, you get shoulder. You have micro step forward, crouching leg kick, leg kick dash punch. So option parry forward, micro walk, crouching, like kick, like kick, dash punch. And then you also have um, the ability to do another light kick, dive kick with in front of your opponent and get that high, low throw. And you can do it even twice more and get the same situation. So if we were to do medium kick, light kick, light kick, this is going to whiff. But if we do medium kick, light kick, medium kick, this hits low enough for a combo. Now, if we do medium, light, heavy, depending on how you, you delay your dive kicks, this will either allow you to hit for one, two, three, or it will allow you to hit in a way that forces the opponent to do something like red parry, or not even really red parry, but forces a parry out of them as a throw or a jump or something is going to get hit. Or if they press a button. So their only option is to try an option parry. So this is why off of this situation, being able to go low with crouching light kicks or high with standing medium punch is important as well. Going for one, two, three always just puts you in a situation where as long as your opponent guess parries in one direction, you're going to lose out. 
However, there are situations where whiffing twice with light kick dive kick can be useful, particularly in situations like this where you can cross your opponent up and then you are a micro step away from making any decision that you want. Whether it's Zempo, close standing medium kick, crouching light kick, light kick dash punch, crouch medium kick dash punch, etc. This is extremely potent in situations where your opponent is about one throw away from the screen. You can either super jump over your opponent. Or you can jump forward heavy kick dive kick. And this crosses your opponent up. In a situation where there's more of the stage to your back than there is to your front. So any crouching medium kick into dash punch is going to corner your opponent. So this is a situation that can occur as well off of when you do medium kick, medium kick whiff, and then you can jump over your opponent as well. Now, this means that you can manipulate this so that you hit in front with a medium kick dive kick, or you cross up with a heavy kick dive kick. So the opponent doesn't quite know what they're going to expect, as medium kick, medium kick, light kick, dive kick doesn't really work. And medium kick, medium kick, super jump, medium kick, dive kick doesn't work at all. So the only other option that you have is neutral jump into, you know, jumping heavy kick or jumping heavy punch. Or you can just straight jump over your opponent and go for a cross up dive kick. with down back light. So this isn't a situation that I really recommend, but it's something that does come up a lot. From this far away, whiffing light kick dive kicks can allow you to reposition for dive kicks that hit your opponent relatively easily. It can also set you up for dive kicks that whiff at different distances. So it's keeping your opponent on their toes. You can also just jump and anti-air them with jumping heavy punch. If they wish to try and, you know, contest your dive kicks, if you're a little too dive kick happy. You know, jumping heavy kick is also a viable air to air. You can also use this as a tool of jumping in afterward. Because you can jump forward medium kick dive kick after two leg kick dive kicks and hit them at a safe position. You can also do it with heavy kick dive kick. Now you can also whiff with medium kick dive kick as well. Or whiff with heavy kick dive kick. So whiffing with multiple light kick dive kicks can set you up for quite a bit of different ways to actually hit your opponent in a safe way with dive kicks or slowly make your way in either by adding a jump forward light kick dive kick to the situation or by adding a jump forward medium kick dive kick for a combo jump ins all that stuff so there's plenty of ways to vary that and there's also ways that you can add other dive kicks in so when you start to add different dive kicks to the combination double medium kicks, light medium heavy. If you do light medium heavy with no delay, you'll actually be able to combo. Depending on how you delay your dive kicks, you'll either be able to get a uh, one, two, three combo, or you'll only be able to get the crouching medium punch, medium punch, dash punch. Just like that. However, If you were to super jump at certain distances, you're always guaranteed at least crouching medium punch dash punch if it hits. But there are situations where you'll hit low enough where you won't be able to combo, but your opponent can't press anything because if they try to throw you, try to jump, try to press a button, they're just going to get beaten out by one, two, three, exactly like in other situations or they're going to get beaten out by standing medium punch or standing medium kick, whatever it is that you press. 
So all of these situations are beneficial for Yun. Now, if we start to, you know, add super jumps in for, uh, you know, whiffing dive kicks, and then it allows you to take more time to try to hit your opponent as well. It also lets you set up things like this. So what I'm trying to say is that no matter how you approach your opponent, as long as you're doing different variations of things, you're going to keep them guessing. Everything allows you to jump forward. Everything allows you to set up cross-up attempts. And everything also allows you to force situations where your opponent has to guess. High, low, throw. So if they think that you're going to be whiffing, cool. If they think that you're going to be able to hit them, wonderful as well. But understanding where you can whiff is very important to making your opponent attempt to parry things and then try to punish. Not everyone opts to option parry and then immediately throw. If you are playing against people that option parry throw no matter what, whiffing and then uh, going for situations where you know, you're throwing and they're throwing and then you're going back to neutral is probably the best way to go about things. But that also means that you can instant dive kick as well or delay and then wait for them to whiff and then punish them. So this is all set up by different types of dive kick variations from this distance. And it's extremely useful. So if you want to hit for 1, 2, 3 to actually combo, or target combo, right? You can't miss space your dive kicks. You have to hit your opponent like right above where Yun is kicking Ken right now. Right? Like right at that knee or above. <clears throat> because the lower you hit, you're only going to be able to go for crouching medium punch and a dash punch. Right? If we do this and we try to do it for one, two, three, light punch whiffs. So if we jump forward and medium he immediately heavy kick dive kick, this allows us to get a one, two, three. But there's no variation in our timing. And this is because if we delay, one, two, three will not combo. It hits above the waist. It will, however, force that high-low throw situation or the uh, frame trap where you can go for your target combo or you can go for your uh, high-low situation. Now, if we want to actually land 1-2-3 consistently against a cornered opponent from further away, medium kick dive kick is very important. And the reason for this is because Although neutral jump medium kick dive kick is not going to hit for a combo, jump forward medium kick dive kick will allow us to hit for one, two, three. But if we immediately do it, as you can see, you hit very low, which allows us to go for crouching medium punch into dash punch. Now, obviously, this changes based on positioning. Neutral jump about halfway through the stun bar or where our shadows are just barely not touching, we'll allow for one, two, three. But if we do heavy kick dive kick at this distance, it's only going to be that uh, frame trap. You're also at perfect positioning for jumping heavy punch into crouching medium kick into dash punch. So there's a lot of different options that you have from this distance. You can delay your dive kick and hit low enough. And then you can also super jump to make sure that you hit low enough. This is with medium kick dive kick. Now if you super jump and then heavy kick dive kick, you're going to be able to only really get one, two, three. You're going to hit high enough for it. Whereas if you do super jump here, you're going to be able to hit low enough that your opponent isn't going to be able to punish for most characters. However, if we do the super jump heavy kick dive kick, you can set the same thing up, or a very similar spacing, 
but you have to do it at the very end. And you can still end up getting your 1, 2, 3. So, the super jump in this particular situation allows you to vary your dive kicks and get different results, but you're always guaranteed to get that combo, or you're always guaranteed to get that safety. When your opponent blocks any of these dive kicks, they're going to be forced into a situation where they have to red parry. If they're not willing to red parry, then they just have to sit there and eat the high-low throw situation that comes up afterward because you are plus. So this is perfect for the situations where, you know, you do this, and then you are pressuring with throw, or you do this, and then you zempo, and all that stuff. There's all sorts of different ways that you can mix up your opponent at the same spacing that you would be able to do your dive kicks that hit them. Now, hitting your opponent with a light kick dive kick in his face is not going to allow you to combo. However, depending on how you space your dive kick and when you do it, you can hit them low enough to be safe. And this only is going to allow you to combo into crouching medium punch into uh, dash punch or standing light kick or crouching light kick into dash punch because you're not able to do one, two, three. You get far standing light punch. So your only real options are the ones that I stated before, crouching medium punch, standing light kick, and crouching light kick. But this isn't a bad thing because you are extremely plus with those, like you're like plus 10. So you can continually pressure your opponent with this as well. This can also be set up off of certain normals, which we'll go into later. But this is not something that is used all that often. It is used, and it is very effective. But it requires your, that your opponent is willing to try to parry things. Because if they're not, then this is less likely to hit. Because they will be trying to parry at a different timing, or they think that you're going to be hitting them in order to get that frame trap situation. It hits low enough that even if they do parry, it may not be fully punishable. But if they opt to walk, basically hit forward to walk forward into this, because of how the trajectory is, they can parry and full punish. So it becomes a little bit riskier. So Comboing off of dive kicks can be relatively difficult, and the only way that I say that it's difficult is that you actually have to understand where you are aiming on your opponent and where you're actually hitting. So from this position under the middle of the screen, if we neutral jump, heavy kick, dive kick, and we try to do one, two, three, as you can see, the first light punch whiffs. Now, if we do crouching medium punch, we're able to do our dash punch, but Against most standing opponents, standing light kick is not going to connect here. So you're very limited in what your options are for combos here. However, in certain situations, and against certain characters, you can do standing light kick into up kicks. Now, this is not commonly done, so don't really consider it an option. But it is an option. Connecting with 1, 2, 3 on a crouching opponent can be finicky. Specifically because if your opponent is crouching, depending on the point in their neutral crouching animation they're in, their hurtbox is going to be in different positions. So this means that if I jump forward, heavy kick, dive kick, immediately, I will hit and go for combo. If I delay at all, there's a chance that it may not work. And if you delay your dive kick at all, there's a chance it's not going to work. So modifying your approach in order to make this consistent can be quite difficult. Now, luckily, this is not a situation you'll have happen very often, specifically because unless it's a set play oriented situation, your opponent should not just be crouching. 
you're not you should not be able to jump at your opponent if they are competent and be able to hit them while they are crouching consistently although this does happen sometimes so understanding how you have to modify your dive kicks or your approach matters and again this is where medium kick dive kick comes in comboing against a crouching opponent is finicky because depending on where they are in their crouching animation you may be able to combo them or not so this is an example of cross up heavy kick dive kick allowing for combo because his hurt box was pushed further back into the corner and I was able to cross up and continue to combo however in most situations this is not possible same thing with medium kick dive kick the later that we do it the more unlikely it is that we're going to be able to combo so this means that at this particular spacing you have to do it early or mid in order to get one two three if we were to do neutral jump heavy kick dive kick here we're not going to be able to combo with one two three even if we try to abuse the standing uh, the crouching thing however if we take a single step forward one two three will work so even just a micro step matters as far as making one two three connect against a crouching opponent I mean obviously it's the same against a standing opponent but it's even more emphasized against crouching opponents so in situations where you would take this step forward neutral jump medium kick dive kick is not going to work into one two three right but heavy kick dive kick will so medium kick dive kick actually has two timings where uh, one two three works a very slight delay and immediate delay and a medium delay so there's two variations of timings that this works but anything after that and you're not even going to be able to hit them with a light punch so parrying your approach for this particular type of dive kick is a little bit easier now if your opponent is crouching it is a little bit more difficult to hit them with this right so this is why most of the Japanese yuns that I've seen have opted to completely go against the one two three if their opponent is crouching unless they're a hundred percent sure that it's going to hit and the reason for that is uh, crouching medium punch standing light kick dash punch works on crouching opponents it does not work on a majority of standing opponents against some it does so you end up getting equal meter and about equal damage as you would to one two three dash punch because against crouching opponents other than hugo you can't do one two three up kicks so doing your combos the most damage and meter that you're going to get here is probably going to end up being one two three heavy punch dash punch or one two three shoulder they both give similar meter but crouching medium punch stand like kick dash punch gives almost identical meter and almost identical damage whereas this is guaranteed to work the only time where this changes is when you actually have meter itself because this jump forward medium kick dive kick into combo is going to turn into a actual full combo right so the difference between your choices can depend on what you like doing if you like forcing your opponent to wake up into your ganajin and you're not conf you're not sure that you're going to get the uh, 
kill with a combo from a dive kick into one, two, three. Then going for that knockdown and then getting them to wake up into your Ganesian could be a viable option. Now, depending on your positioning, dive kick may hit for combo, or it may not just on neutral jump. And understanding where you end up makes a difference. So knowing that you can set specific sp spacings where this particular thing will work matters. Now, one thing to mention is that jump forward, light kick, dive kick as a combo against crouching opponents, sometimes crouching medium kick will whiff unless you fully crouch, like we talked about in previous things. So this is why you'll see if they hit, manage to hit their opponent with this, they will often do standing light kick into dash punch instead. Although it gives less meter, you're not going to end up being able to get a crouching medium punch into standing light kick from this particular dive kick when they're crouching. So either they'll go for a delayed crouching medium punch or they'll go for a standing light kick, which is the much more consistent version. What happens when we talk about super jumps? As we can see here, no matter what, light kick, or medium kick dive kick can be inconsistent about hitting our opponent, depending on where they are in their crouching animation. If I wait before I super jump, it becomes easier for medium kick to hit. However, heavy kick dive kick will always hit, or almost always hit from this distance. But you'll only be able to get crouching medium punch into dash punch as a combo. So this means it can be relatively easy to read what your choices are if you're jumping in at your opponent from this distance. However, you do still have the ability to do uh, normals as well. So it's not 100% easy read. You can also just whiff into your opponent's face and go for, you know, Zempo Tension or Throw or High-Low Throw or whatever. But it's not easy to get 1, 2, 3 from this distance. In fact, it's impossible. If we take a step and a half forward, though, and we're right under the nameplate and our opponent is cornered, we have about 70% of the screen between the two characters. This is where more options start to open up. Jump forward, heavy or super jump forward, heavy kick, dive kick, then becomes able to combo into one, two, three. And then super jump delay, medium kick, dive kick can also force the same thing. And then you can also get a safe dive kick with the medium kick, dive kick as well. Same thing with heavy kick, dive kick if you do it instantly. So there's a very slight delay for that on the medium kick dive kick and then there's also a no delay on the heavy kick dive kick pretty much you can continue to whiff in front of your opponent's face as well you can continue to jump in and do normals you can continue to whiff dive kick and then go for high low throw so there's quite a bit of options and the closer you get the less these options exist and the more variation in how you're approaching can happen because super jump neutral is never going to hit at this distance but it will closer obviously neutral super jumping is another tool you can use in order to force the combos that you want at very specific distances however Neutral super jumping also makes it easier for your opponent to react to your choice. So, from a mid-screen situation, or a you're under the timer situation, 
Super Jump into Heavy Kick Dive Kick is going to put you in a Crouching Medium Punch into Dash Punch situation. You cannot do 1, 2, 3. No matter how far you delay your Dive Kick. But you can hit your opponent for Crouching Medium Punch into Dash Punch no matter how far into your Super Jump you end up Dive Kicking. So that's important to note. Positioning is very important for super jumps. And that is, you limit yourself in the situation that I just showed, where you can only do heavy kick, dive kick, unless you want to whiff in front of your opponent. So in a position that we're in now, where Yun's front foot is about halfway through the can on the ground, and he's right at the very edge of the stun bar, and his opponent is under the picture, or the character portrait. From this distance, a super jump, medium kick, dive kick, will either whiff it if you do it at the very end, or if you do it halfway through, will allow you to hit. If you do it at the very end of your super jump, with heavy kick, dive kick, you can also get crouching medium kick punch into dash punch. However, you can get one, two, three if you do this early enough. So this changes your decision making because super jump at this distance allows you to hit extremely low against crouching opponents or it allows you to whiff or it allows you to hit for crouching medium punch off of heavy kick or one, two, three. This also is the distance for jump forward, medium kick, dive kick, and jump forward, delay, light kick, dive kick, as combos. Now, in particular, this spacing, um, if you jump forward, heavy kick, dive kick, is going to be a frame trap. Now, neutral jump, heavy kick, dive kick, is going to put you in a similar position, where you're able to do one, two, three. And just neutral jump, medium kick, dive kick will always hit for a crouching medium punch, dash punch. So you have quite a few options at this distance, and you can mix up your dive kick choices as well. Where you can go for target combo with a micro step forward off of a whiff light kick, dive kick. You can go for high low throw off of a whiff medium kick, dive kick. Or you can hit your opponent extremely low with late heavy kick dive kick. You can whiff in front with late medium kick dive kick. Halfway through, you can do medium kick dive kick to hit low again. Immediate medium kick dive kick will also hit low. An immediate heavy, punt, uh, heavy kick dive kick will make it so that you can pretty much do 1, 2, 3. But if you... If you actually do it too fast, 1, 2, 3 won't work. So in order to do 1, 2, 3, you actually have to wait until Yun's head goes above the um, life bars. Otherwise, 1, 2, 3 won't work. Right? If you do it too fast, you have to do the, uh, whatchamacallit, the crouching medium punch and a dash punch. But if you delay it very slightly, you can get 1, 2, 3 as your choice. So there's a lot of different timings that go into what combos when. And having the most difference in choices, or having the most amount of choices at your disposal, is what's going to allow you to mix your opponent up most easily. So in order to get to this spacing, it's literally just standing medium punch, micro step back, or you know, crouching medium kick, crouching medium kick, micro step back. And all that stuff. So the next thing we're gonna be talking about is using normals in order to space dive kicks.
So there are a lot of things that you can do that put you at the same positioning. Standing medium punch puts you at the same distancing as crouching light kick, light kick. Puts you at the same distancing as crouching medium punch, stand light kick. You get the idea. So there's a lot of ways that you can get to the same distance. It's all about how you use this distance to maximize your potential for mixing your opponent up. Before we even look at dive kicks at this spacing, we have to look at what this spacing represents to our opponent. Universal overhead, stand light kick, dash punch. Crouching medium kick, dash punch. Micro step, target combo. Shoulder. Walk forward, carrot throw. Walk forward, Sempo tension. It's also the ability to walk back and just continue to goaltend. Also at this spacing, you can neutral jump, stand uh, heavy punch into dash punch as a confirm. This is very difficult though. That's why this is only doable at ranges where crouching medium kick is not going to hit. So if we take a micro step forward, and then crouching medium kick will hit our opponent, that may be a better choice. Early jump uh, buttons in most cases are not going to hit, unless the character is at a very particular point in their jump, and they are in a particular point in their standing animation. Because at certain points, depending on when I wait to jump, Ken is either going to have the hurt box over his shoulder, or it will be a little bit lower, depending on what point in his neutral animation he's in. So, you have a lot of different choices, right? You can also jump in to cross up your opponent with a jumping heavy kick into a combo, as long as their back is fully to the corner. Oops. Now, obviously, that is character specific, but it is a choice. But where do dive kicks come in? As far as dive kicks go, you have a lot of options. So let's go through them one by one. We'll go through light kick first. You have neutral jump, light kick, dive kick for a whiff. This puts you in high-low throw. This will also proximity guard, as we've already shown. So we have Goomba jumping, where she is hitting your opponent at a distance which is right on top of their head or their shoulder. In order to force that jump slash throw situation. So, in an ideal world, you also have another option. Where you can jump forward and combo off of light kick, dive kick at a very delayed timing. Medium kick, dive kick is a little bit different. Medium kick, dive kick, if done immediately, requires you to do crouching medium punch, dash punch. So as you can see here, the standing light punch whiffs. If you do it at the latest time, you also whiff. So this means that both of these require you to do crouching medium punch, dash punch. So what happens if you do it at a middle timing? One, two, three works. So you have three different timings. Two of them have the same decision afterward, and one of them has a different decision. What happens if we add super jump to the equation? When we take a look at super jump with medium kick, dive kick, no matter when we do this, we're not going to be able to one, two, three. So this means that Crouching medium punch into dash punch is our only real option. However, if we take a micro step forward, single micro step forward, one, two, three becomes a viable option. So if you're crouching at this distance, you know, and you take a step forward and block, and then you super jump, one, two, three is a viable option. But it requires that 
step forward. Otherwise, the only choice that you have is hitting low enough for crouching medium punch dash punch. Heavy kick dive kick is really fickle. You have to get frame one at this spacing in order to make it so that one, two, three works. Now this also matters based on when you jump. Because if I wait a second, Ken's hurt box gets changed when he's in his neutral position. So being able to one, two, three is not always going to be consistent, even if you're able to get your frame one. This applies to other combos as well. Getting crouching medium punch requires your opponent to be at a very particular point in their, uh, whatchamacallit, in their neutral animation. So this is something that you have no control over. But getting standing light kick off of this is much easier. Or one, two, three. If you delay your one, two, three, or if you delay your dive kick whatsoever, it'll never work. No matter how much you delay this, you will not be able to combo. So delaying your dive kicks means that you have to go with medium punch, or medium kick. Now if we talk about super jump, super jump and then immediate uh, heavy kick dive kick will make it so that one, two, three will connect relatively easily. And this is where crouching medium punch becomes more viable. But still not consistent. So crouching medium punch when using heavy kick dive kick in this particular spacing is something you have to use caution. And in my opinion, completely abandon. Because even when you do uh, neutral jump, heavy kick, dive kick, into an attempted one, two, three, uh, target combo, you have to hit at a very particular positioning in order to get it to work. No matter how you space this, it has to force Ken to be in a situation where you're hitting him low enough at the knee. However, one, two, three, because of how fast it is, four frames versus five or whatever, you can actually make this work much more easy. So I still think that at this distance, because of that, uh, the ability to super jump and then consistently know what your options are only having one real option off of medium kick is more important but if you're insistent on getting one two three super jump into heavy kick dive kick as opposed to neutral jump heavy kick dive kick is probably going to be your best option now if we take a micro step back it becomes very easy to get neutral jump, medium, or heavy kick, dive kick into one, two, three. If we take a micro step forward, it becomes easy with medium kick. So spacing wise, you have to know how to build these micro steps in. So spacing wise, being able to do short, short, super jump is a little bit easier to hide. Because when you do standing medium punch and do uh, super jump, it's a little bit easier to see you uh, get the animation started. And you actually have to wait for the standing medium punch to finish completely. But it's much easier and less recovery time off of short, short. So if we get our crouching light kick and it opens up super jump, 
to be a little bit easier. How can we use different pokes in order to get into the micro step variants of this? Where you take that micro step back or you take that micro step forward. Short, short, if you tap back at the end, puts you at that exact spacing that you want to be at. So this allows you to do your neutral jump heavy kick dive kick relatively easily. This also allows you to use your neutral jump medium kick dive kick to hit as low as possible. So when we do our short short, we can also take that micro step forward, which allows us to neutral jump medium kick dive kick and go for one, two, three as well. This exists off of all of the other uh, low stuff. Or crouching medium punch stand light kick, option parry forward, and then we're at the correct distance. Now, this means that certain things become a little bit easier as far as reading what we want to do if we go for these micro steps. Because it means that we're most likely to option parry forward against characters that may have good lows. So again, this is something that we'll talk about later in the risk reward section. But at this particular spacing, you have quite a bit of options. So we're going to be looking at another spacing now. Standing medium punch, crouching medium kick, puts us at this spacing. Standing medium punch, standing light kick, puts us at this spacing. Crouching medium, crouching medium, crouching medium kick, puts us at this spacing. Crouching light kick, light kick, crouching medium kick also puts us at this spacing. You're also almost put at this spacing by standing heavy punch, so a micro step back will put you at this spacing. Now let's take a look at all the dive kicks from this positioning. We're going to start with light kick. Now, with super jump light kick, you basically just end up right in front of your opponent again at the ability to go for a target combo, you know, crouching medium kick, micro step, standing medium kick, etc. All the options that we have already talked about in another situation. Now, neutral jump, light kick, dive kick puts us a little bit closer to that close standing medium kick. And it also puts us at a situation where you can micro step forward or option parry forward block standing medium punch into standing light kick dash punch. At this spacing, jumping heavy punch does not work. So light kick dive kick from these situations doesn't get you Zempo tension unless you jump forward. You can whiff jumping forward for Zempo tension. You can also go high low throw. Now if you're playing Yang, you can go for crouching like a EX records off of this sort of a situation. But for Yun, those are pretty much the only ways that you can use light kick, except for that one example where you can jump forward and do very delayed light kick, dive kick, and hit for combo. Super jumping forward is only going to allow you to hit him in the shoulder or the head, which if parried is very bad, and if blocked you're still negative three, so you are forced into that rock, paper, scissors situation. Medium kick, dive kick has a lot less uses at this distance. Super jump, medium kick, dive kick will always whiff in front of your opponent. Super jump forward, medium kick, dive kick will always hit them at, in the head, or possibly cross them up, depending on the character. It's not going to cross up for combo, however, so this is important. Now, when we neutral jump head, uh, medium kick dive kick, we'll always end up in front of our opponent. Whether we super jump or not, the spacing is always going to be the same. Yun's front foot is going to be basically in front of Ken's foot. So this puts us at the high low throw situation. This also puts us in a situation where Ken is going to be forced into proximity guard. Now if we jump forward and we try to combo, if we delay whatsoever, it's not going to work. It's going to put him into that frame trap situation. However, if we do an immediate medium kick dive kick, we can do all of our different situations. One, two, three, target combo, 
medium fierce back fierce target combo, and then crouching medium punch dash punch. So medium kick doesn't have quite as many options at this position because you don't ever hit unless you jump forward and medium kick immediately dive kick. But as soon as you, your opponent sees you jump forward, you can still whiff with light kick dive kick. So if they parry, they can be forced into proximity guard. And if they parry at the wrong time, they're just going to eat 1, 2, 3, or crouching medium punch dash punch. So although there are less ways to hit, there are still quite a bit of ways that you can use this. Whiffing is just as important as I've already gone over. Now taking a look at heavy kick dive kick. If we do an immediate one, it hits as low as possible pretty much. So crouching medium punch into dash punch is your only option. If we delay a little bit, 1, 2, 3 becomes possible. It's when Yun's hat goes above the timer and he starts to uh, initially descend. That's when you can do your 1, 2, 3. But on your way down, you're only going to be able to do the crouching medium punch dash punch. You're not going to be able to whiff with this unless you do a super jump and then do it as late as possible. Then you can whiff just like you would off of the medium kick. And it's the same spacing, but it's a faster dive kick. So if your goal is to whiff and you want to do it at the very end of your dive kick, you should either be doing light kick or heavy kick. Unless you want to do a middle of your dive kick whiff. And then you can go for medium kick. However, jumping forward at this distance, an immediate heavy kick dive kick will allow you to 1, 2, 3. It won't allow you to crouch and medium punch, though, in a lot of situations. It's much easier to do 1, 2, 3. And if you super jump forward, heavy kick, dive kick, depending on when you do it in your jump arc, you'll either cross up for no combo, or if they're not able to be crossed up, you'll hit them like a Goomba kick, just slightly better frame data since it hits them a little bit lower on their body. So super jumping forward is usually not an ideal situation, but it can be used to your advantage And all that stuff. There's a lot of ways that you can use your dive kicks off of every spacing. Another decently common occurrence is something like crouching medium punch, crouching medium kick, stand fierce. And this pushes you back quite a bit. When you're this far away from your opponent, your usage for light kick, dive kick becomes less. Because neutral jump, light kick, dive kick here only really sets up other dive kicks. You're out of range for anything but far standing heavy punch or shoulder. So this means that your opponent doesn't have to worry about any lows. However, if you uh, jump forward, they do have to worry about lows. Right? So. Jumping forward also sets you up for dive kicks. But it puts you a little bit closer to your opponent, so if they're paying attention, they can whiff punish. Now, super jump, light kick, dive kick, doesn't really do much for you either. It can set up whiffs, and depending on how long you wait when you land, it can set up hits. If you immediately re-jump, it's not going to hit. But if you let yourself recover, then you will you will hit with your heavy kick dive kick. And this is another usage of that thing that I talked about earlier. So at this particular distance, our best use for light kick dive kick is with jump forward light kick dive kick. Now jump forward immediate light kick dive kick puts us at range for crouching light kick, or medium kick into dash punch. It also puts it in range for target combo, shoulder, 
the ability to dive kick safely with jumping medium kick. The ability to super, uh, normal jump, heavy kick, dive kick, and go one, two, three. So you have quite a bit of options. You also have the ability to normal jump, heavy punch. Or jump in. So there's quite a bit that you can do. But if you change the timing at which you do your light kick dive kick to be very much later, you can do Zempo Tension. Or you can do it early, full crouch, and then Zempo Tension. So that thing that I was talking about earlier has much more effect on situations where you're using light kick dive kick as a tool to get in against your opponent, but uh, where you land and how you land can influence what your choices are. So by landing here, far sand medium kick is not an option, but as soon as I crouch, it is. So then we have the option to go for, uh, you know, whatever it is that we want to do. Close to any medium kick, close to any medium punch, etc., etc. So medium kick, or I should say light kick, has very limited uses as far as um, a tool to approach your opponent outside of being just that, the way that you approach. Because they're always going to whiff and it's always going to be setting up other tools. Whether it's your normals, whether it's your specials, or whether it's another dive kick. That's what it's good for at this distance. Whether it's neutral jumping or jumping forward, it's always to set something up. Medium kick dive kick is a different beast from this far away. No matter if you do a neutral jump or a super jump, neutral, you're always going to whiff right in the same position. And this position is perfect for Zempo tension. However, if we super jump, short short does not work. If we regular jump, short short does work. If we super jump and we full crouch, short short does work. So this is another thing that I was talking about earlier. So when we're far away and we're neutral jumping, we're not going to get a whole lot from this. However, if we super jump and then we immediately jump to cancel the recovery, we're at perfect distance for normal jump, heavy punch into crouching medium punch, dash punch, confirm. So we do have that as a new option. Now, as far as jumping forward, immediate jump forward is always going to give us a whiff. Delay will put us in position for crouching medium punch dash punch because we hit very low. Delaying a little bit more will allow us to do one, two, three. So those are the ways that you can approach with non-super jump version. And when you super jump, you have to do an immediate dive kick in order to combo. If you delay whatsoever, you'll just put yourself into the frame trap situation that we've already talked about. So you gain some new ways that you can approach your opponent, but you also put yourself in a situation where you are going to be right next to them no matter what. So even in situations where you're jumping forward, you're going to whiff. You might as well do light kick dive kick to give yourself a little bit of chance to uh, be able to do your option select. So you get to do your block that I talked about in previous videos for Zempo. Now just like jumping medium kick, neutral jump heavy kick is going to whiff right in front of your opponent. You're going to be in range for a short, short dash punch. However, super jump, no matter how long you delay, puts you in the exact same position. So the only difference is going to be where you land. If you were to immediately jump, you get the same situation. Jump heavy punch into crushing medium kick dash punch. 
Now you also get the same situation off of a jumping heavy kick. But you can't do crouching medium kick as easy. You have to go into either target combo, standing light kick, crouching medium punch, etc. So you do have a little bit more options. And against certain characters, this puts you at the distance for target combo. So your post dive kick options from rejump are a little bit more robust. You still get the ability to go high low throw, and you still get the ability to, um, you know, whiff tempo. So you have quite a bit there. Now when we start to jump forward is where we get to hit our opponent. If we do it immediately, we hit extremely low. Which means that we can only do our crouching medium punch. If we do a very slight delay, we can do one, two, three. This means that if we super jump forward with heavy kick, we're not going to be able to combo. It'll always frame trap. However, if you delay, just like medium kick, you will be able to cross up your opponent and not combo. But this is only really useful mid-screen, as cornering yourself is not ideal. Now that we have covered farther distances, what happens when we're really, really close? If we only do one crouching light kick or one crouching medium punch, what do we have for options now? For light kick dive kicks, we're going to whiff, either off of neutral super jump or off of normal jump. Jumping forward is only going to push us into a situation where we can't combo. It'll hit him in the shoulder, and it's not an ideal position. So this means that if we take a micro step back, we're still going to whiff. And if we take a micro step forward, however, against certain characters, especially if they are crouching, you'll be able to get this combo. So it's a little bit harder to do, but it is an option. Super jumping, like I said, is not going to be an option unless you do a reverse dive kick and then you end up cornering yourself or putting yourself in a situation where you're playing rock paper scissors with your opponent this happens mid-screen as well now because of the how close you are obviously neutral jump medium kick and light kick dive kicks are not going to be great jump forward medium kick dive kick is okay as a frame trap tool depending on the character. And then jump forward, heavy kick, dive kick, depending on if you do it immediately or if you delay it, will cross up your opponent. You're not going to be able to combo or anything, but you're going to get over them. So, that's also character specific. Certain characters you won't be able to get over them. But, in these situations, neutral super jump is not going to allow for combos unless you do a last possible frame or very 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 late medium kick super jump neutral dive kick you're not going to really get anything off of heavy you're only going to get that frame trap situation so at this particular distance if you take that micro step back you'll be able to combo with standing light kick Or, one, two, three, off of a heavy kick, dive kick. But with no, um, with no super jump and no micro step back, you're not going to be able to do anything. Your only choice is going to be able to do uh, normal jump combos.
However, at this close, you still have all the options in the world. You have all of your close standing normals, and you have all of your um, you know, Zempo. You have all of your things are available to you. So dive kicking at this distance doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Now, Yun only has one special move that doesn't either knock down on hit or doesn't let him be hard punished on block. And that's shoulder. All three variations, medium, heavy, and light, push him back to the same positioning. This positioning. Now, why this positioning might look familiar is because it's the micro step positioning off of the standing medium punch crouching medium kick position. So let's just do a quick breakdown of this. This is one of those finicky spacings where your choice post dive kick matters a lot. If we cancel with Zempo, doesn't work. Cancel with light kick, we can only do one crouching light kick. We let ourselves recover. Only one crouching light kick, light kick. Or one crouching light kick, out of crouching light kick, light kick. If we full crouch, Crouching like it, like it works. So that's the best example of how these choices can influence our decisions. Now, it puts you in great range for close standing normals and all that jazz, right? Jump forward can be delayed so that you can combo. You can delay so that you land right next to him as well. There's not a whole lot to say. Now, medium kick, dive kick. Neutral jump will hit low enough for combo. Jump forward will hit for one, two, three. Um, neutral jump, heavy kick will hit for one, two, three. Jump forward, heavy kick will hit for frame drop. Super jump, delay, medium kick, dive kick. At the very end of the thing, we'll whiff. If it's about halfway through, it'll also whiff. If you cancel in the first half of the super jump, you'll hit as low as possible. Super jump heavy kick, dive kick, same sort of thing. Cancel it in the first half. You should be able to do one, two, three. Do it in the second half, you can only do crouching medium punch, dash punch. It's going to be very hard at this distance to not hit your opponent. So if you don't want to hit them, medium kick, dive kick, or light kick, dive kick. Now if you do this as delayed as possible from the neutral jump, medium kick, dive kick, you'll still hit as low as possible. Same thing with the heavy kick, dive kick. So it's a relatively consistent spacing. Jumping heavy punch is not going to work. Jumping medium kick, jumping heavy kick is not going to work. Jump forward target combo is an option. Jump forward normals is also an option. So mixing things up at this distance is pretty easy. You also have crouching medium kick if you take a micro step forward. You also have target combo if you take more than a micro step forward. You have another shoulder. You have standing heavy punch, standing heavy kick, sweep. You do have quite a bit of options, but repositioning to goaltending or repositioning to the position that I was talking about before from the two button sort of pushback is probably going to be just as likely. There's not a whole lot to this. It's pretty much the exact same. Super jump forward, medium kick, dive kick is going to cross up your opponent. Same thing with heavy kick. Light kick is just going to uh, Mario hop. Or Goomba jump, or whatever you want to call it. So super jumping forward at this particular position is not really ideal. It's pretty much the same as this situation, just with a very slight difference. Because doing a normal jump off of a Medium kick, dive kick, up, step back, 
is not going to allow for one, two, three. But at this spacing, with another micro step forward, it will. Otherwise, you're just going to be hitting at the knees. But if you want one, two, three, neutral jump heavy kick. Can't be immediate. If you do an immediate one, then all you have is crouching medium punch. Like I said, pretty similar to the other. The first thing we're going to talk about is using crouching medium kick as a measuring stick for heavy kick dive kick. Now, it also is a measuring stick for jump forward medium kick dive kick 1, 2, 3. So if this position looks familiar, because it should, it's the exact same position that you get out of you hitting your opponent multiple times pushing you to that mid-screen-ish position. Using this as a measuring stick, as far as if things are going to work or not, can help you quite a bit. As I've already gone over, you know, jump forward, medium kick, dive kick is going to hit for, you know, one, two, three, or it's going to hit for crouching medium punch or whatever. Neutral jump, heavy kick, dive kick does the same. If we take a micro step back, same situation. Take a micro step forward. The only difference here is that neutral jump, medium kick, dive kick now hits, whereas before it will not. So with that micro step forward, this puts us at the shoulder range that I've already showed you. So you know all of the different options at these different ranges. It's now just figuring out how to know where on the screen you are without having stage cues. And that's where whiffing comes in. So knowing that you are just outside of range of your crouching medium kick hitting is a cue to having this particular spacing. Knowing that you're just in range for crouching medium kick to hit means you know that you're at another spacing. And knowing that you're at a, a range where you can whiff punish their crouching medium kick or low hitting normal or whatever, or chun standing heavy punch, means that you know that you can get in on your opponent as well. Or you can use these tools as ways to know how you can whiff to get into your opponent. Okay, I know that my crouching medium kick is not going to hit. My neutral jump medium kick dive kick is no longer capable of hitting my opponent. I just want to get in enforce that throw break situation or I want to try to get a throw on my opponent or I want to just jump in mix things up there are other normals as well that you can use this with so using normals such as whiffing standing medium kick or whiffing standing heavy punch as a way of understanding where your opponent may go and what your options are can help you decide what decision you want to make. If you're in neutral and they're able to walk backwards, being able to jump forward and medium kick dive kick or jump forward and heavy kick dive kick is going to be able to catch them. Now, if we do jump forward light kick dive kick, this puts us in position for Zempo Tension or your normal high-low throw. So, we also know that we're at max distance where we can make, take a micro step and hit our opponent, right? And at this micro step positioning, we have slightly different choices. You know, you have the ability to neutral jump heavy kick dive kick. You have the ability to jump forward medium kick dive kick into one, two, three. Whereas jump forward medium kick dive kick is not going to get you anything but target combo or crouching medium punch into dash punch at the whiffing stage. So if you know that you're in a position where this is going to hit, then you know where certain dive kicks will hit or whiff. 
neutral jump medium kick dive kick as an example at this space will always whiff. Super jump heavy kick dive kick will always whiff. Super jump medium kick dive kick will always whiff. So being able to use normals instead of stage cues as your understanding of where and why you can connect with your opponent or what your choices are can make all the difference in the world. Now, just to give you an example of how position and meter can coincide with one another, when you're able to whiff your crouching medium punch here, you have a bunch of options from jump, right? You have neutral jump, one, two, three. Medium kick, back kick, one, two, three. You have light kick as a whiff, and then you also have jump forward light kick as a combo. Now this is the spacing that is just inside of a crouching leg kick leg kick spacing. So it's crouching leg kick leg kick micro step forward, and this is where the crouching medium punch will whiff. Now, when you're at this distance, if you neutral jump heavy kick dive kick, you're not going to get anything from it. If you jump forward heavy kick dive kick, or jump forward medium kick dive kick, you're not really going to get anything from it either. So jumping forward here, you're putting yourself in a position where you know that you're going to be attempting to put your opponent in a uh, frame trap situation. Or a you're forced to throw type of situation. Whereas off of neutral jump with medium, medium kick, you can force a lot more. Now when you start to add super jump into the mix, Super jump, very delayed. Heavy kick, dive kick, will allow you to one, two, three. Neutral jump, medium kick, dive kick, will also allow you to one, two, three. It'll also allow you to do crouching medium punch, dash punch. Super jump into medium kick, dive kick is going to give you crouching medium punch, dash punch. So at this distance, having all those options at your disposal is important. You also have the ability to cross up with jump heavy kick against certain characters like I've already pointed out in a similar spacing. So, what do you get that's added? Or what is something that I haven't talked about at the similar spacing that this one also has? And that's when you talk about when you have very high meter. At this distancing, when you have DED meter, which is what I have now, where if I hit them, it'll end up pushing the opponent or pushing my bar to max. If they block it, then it won't. You have, I may be a little bit too close, but you get the idea. Anyway, from this positioning, you have micro step forward, stand medium kick as your way of starting off. You also have full step forward, crouching medium kick, activate. Now, why is this important? Well, super jump, Light kick, dive kick, set you up for both of these. So the more meter that you have, the more potent this situation becomes. Because not only can you mix your opponent up on the ground, as far as what your decision is, and this is a very common situation where you get to this position when your opponent gets knocked down, where you'll walk back into it and then walk forward, if you so choose. You also have the ability to one, two, three, and then activate. And then you get your combo. So specifically to this situation, you also have the ability to super jump and then continue your goaltending because you'll end up right under the timer. And you'll end up right at the positioning with a super jump where normal jump, heavy kick, dive kick will hit your opponent. It puts you right back at the situation that I was talking about before where this move will whiff. or it will be right in range to hit. 
So you can do jump forward, medium kick, dive kick, one, two, three. Or you can do jump forward, or neutral jump, heavy kick, dive kick. Neutral is a different beast. As we see here, if I whiff light kick, dive kick, I'm in range. If I whiff super jump, light kick, dive kick, I'm still in range, right? So now we're just playing footsies, where either you're beating him or he's whiff punishing you. So when you talk about neutral, you talk about whiff punishing, you don't think of dive kicks as a way of punishing. Now, using dive kicks as a way of whiff punishing is something that not a lot of people really consider, unless you're a high-level player. Now, dive kicks as a whiff punish is a pretty, pretty simple concept. As we see here, if I whiff a light kick dive kick, I'm in range for his normal. But if I immediately jump forward, I can whiff punish his next attempted crouching medium kick. That he's either going to think that I'm going to be pressing a button, or think that I'm going to be trying to low parry and changing the timing and all that stuff. Ken has a lot of different options. But specifically, as he's doing this, I can hit the startup of his move as well, and whiff punish that way. So if you think that your opponent is going to hard commit to a decision, then it's a possibility that you can hit them when they're trying to do one of their normals in neutral. So this also means that if you're backing up, as an example, and you're doing light kick, dive kick, you're going to be out of distance. But your opponent may still think that you want to contest by pressing buttons going for a crouching medium kick into dash punch, as an example, right? So, you can contest with your dive kicks. Or you can give yourself the opportunity to jump in. By playing these footsie games and then whiffing dive kicks at distances where you know your opponent is going to think that you may make a decision that may not include a jump. So dive kicks can be used as a way to facilitate a decision out of your opponent, and they can be used as a way of whiff punishing your opponent as well. So as we see here, if he walks forward, you're in perfect range for other types of dive kicks as well. Now this also works for building meter, right? Where if you're building meter, and you mix in like crouching light punch instead and you see them whiff and you think they may whiff something again thinking that you might go from this to this or this to this where they take that micro step forward and they go for another button you can just jump and go over it so dive kick is a very special tool and it is very multifaceted it can be used as a spacing tool, it can be used as a movement tool, and it can be used as a way to start combos. It can be used as a whiff punish, it can be used in a lot of ways. So now let's take a look at Chun. We have her doing back fierce, back fierce, crouching medium kick, back fierce, fierce, fierce. Now, when she does back fierce, back fierce, and I jump forward, I can jump in with a bunch of stuff and hit her right? If she goes for the crouching medium. But let's say that she goes from crouching medium punch to back fierce. You can hit her out of the startup of the back fierce. Or you can hit the back fierce on recovery, just like this. So there's a lot of ways that you can deal with your opponent when they're pressing buttons to try to build meter, or they're trying to whiff punish or force you to press buttons in neutral, regardless of the character, no matter how strong your buttons are. Now this also means that understanding how you can properly punish things
matters as well. So knowing that off of a back fierce, that even if she does lightning legs, you can get target combo, means that you can take advantage of the situation if you opt to jump forward parry. Now your opponent doesn't know if you want to dive kick or parry. So, depending on how you want to do this, you can also use this as a way to allow you to put yourself in situations with other dive kicks, such as that light kick one, to whiff punish a back fierce or a stand fierce with your crouching medium kick. So there's a lot of ways that dive kicks can be used. And here we, you know, take going back and forth, you know, jumping in and hitting the startup. I get hit there. I'm able to hit Chun-Li after her crouching medium kick here. I'm able to jump in and hit Chun-Li out of the startup of her standing heavy punch. Now, obviously, your opponent is just not going to be chain doing normal moves in a lot of situations. They're going to be spacing things out so that you don't get a read on their particular timing. So doing this is not always going to be, you know, cut and dry. There's going to be situations where, you know, doing dive kick, dive kick, and then option parrying is going to be an option as well. Right? So... Dive kicks can be a whiff punish, dive kicks can be a way in against your opponent, and dive kicks can be a way to hit the startup of particular moves, as long as you are doing them at the correct time. Now, Yang takes advantage of this a little better than Yun, specifically because any dive kick being negative three means that there's a lot of situations where just getting in or forcing that um, frame trap situation is going to be more beneficial for Yang because he can just go into Rekka pressure or slash pressure whereas Yun has to work a little bit harder just getting in doesn't mean everything however being able to get in depending on what your opponent's next choice is you can actually zempo them out of their next choice if you are plus enough so I hit Chun-Li here, and she wanted to go for back fierce afterward, or even stand roundhouse or whatever, and she's most likely going to get zempoed. Unless she does forward roundhouse, where she does the off-the-ground kick or something. So that's the next point, is using dive kick as a poke, or as a tick. It's a pretty simple concept. You jump at your opponent, you hit them in a place where it would normally be quote-unquote safe, and then you throw. Now if you're able to get a forward throw in situations like this, where you push Ken back with your dive kick, you're going to get a forward throw into the corner. However, you can also use this for a Zeppo tension with a option parry forward and then going for the continued uh, setup. You can also use this as a way of doing the uh, high block situation where you will end up uh, walking slightly out of their throw range and then going for a block situation into a Zempo Tension. As you can see, I take a micro step back there as I'm doing my Zempo Tension. So that stops you from getting DP'd, and it stops you from getting hit by close to any medium punch fierce as an example against Ken. Or against Chun-Li, it will stop you from getting standing heavy kicked or whatever. Now because you are so plus here, you can throw your opponent with Zempo in situations where they're trying to mash buttons. Um, now there is a way that you can use this with a cross-up situation. Now when we cross our opponent up, it's difficult to stay close enough in order to get the tick throw. 
Now, it's also difficult to maintain when you actually get the cross-up against specific characters. The taller they are, the harder it is. So against characters that you can do this with, or, or against, it's a relatively far super jump forward, medium kick, dive kick, while you're still in front of them. And this puts you in range for a micro step <coughs> into your Zen potential. This also puts you in situation where you're a micro step away from your close standing normals. So there's a lot of ways that you can mix your opponent up off of this. However, this is a situation where even though it is technically a tick throw, the tick does not put you at positive situation. You're not plus eight like you would be off of a dive kick like this, or even plus five. You're probably closer to negative three. And it's just sort of rock, paper, scissors with your opponent. So although it technically is a tick throw, because you are doing one thing, even if it leaves you negative, and then going for a, you know, Zempo tension or a throw. It's not quite as good as if you're doing like a crouching light kick as a tick throw, or a one-two micro step throw, or something like that. It takes a little bit of risk. That's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot to using your dive kick as a tick throw, but that's pretty much what happens. You use it when you hit low enough, and then your opponent has to block, and then you throw. Worst case scenario, they tech it. Best case scenario, you get your throw. Another thing I want to add is that not only can they be used as tick throws, but because of your positioning after a dive kick, a lot of the cast can't throw you because they have small throw ranges. This means they have to tap forward in order to throw. So you can option parry after you dive kick. And then you can go for frame traps. Or you can option parry before you throw. You can even micro step before you go for your one, two, three as a frame trap. Or your close standing medium punch. Or your crouching light kick, light kick. Depending on how low you actually hit your opponent depends on how effective this is. The lower you hit them, the more effective it is because of how many extra plus frames you get. You only really get a single step if you hit them extremely low. But using this as a frame trap is also an option. So we're going to assume our opponent is going to play neutral with us, where they want to be moving away. It's not always that you want to be in Yun's face, right? So how do we combat this? Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. Let's say from this distance, Normally, jump forward, heavy kick, dive kick will allow us to whiff punishes, crouching medium punches, crouching medium kicks, whatever. Um, but if they just hold back, we'll end up whiffing in front of their face. So how do we deal with our opponent moving back? So when our opponent is moving backwards, we have a few ways of changing our positioning. Now. Based on neutral, right, let's say you're chasing your opponent down, but they're slowly walking their way to the corner. This is going to force your jump forward, heavy kick, dive kick to whiff. This means that you have to intentionally know that they're going to be attempting to deal with your dive kick, and then option parry when you land, intentionally forcing yourself into that situation, or you can simply walk forward with them, and then change your positioning or what your decision is. So that's the very basic way to do it. You walk, you walk, you walk, and then you make a decision. But as you can see here, Ken was able to outspace me, crouching medium punch, and if he had an eater, he'd be able to super. So it's not a catch-all, right? You can't just walk your opponent down 
when they're trying to do this. Because they're eventually going to move forward. And they're eventually going to jump forward. So while you can be trying to force your opponent to make a decision, dive kicking may end up making you get hit. Right? So, we can combat this, however, by changing up our approach. Dive kick wickening is very important when your opponent is moving back, because it lets you control the tempo. And this is where super jump neutral also lets you control the tempo. Because they can only pull the screen so far until you move. So as they're walking backwards, you can immediately backdash and force the screen into a particular position. This means that they can only move so far. So this means that if you jump forward medium kick dive kick and then super jump forward heavy kick dive kick, if they're walking backwards, that heavy kick dive kick will hit them as low as possible. So forcing the opponent into a situation where they can't just walk backwards by holding the screen in position is also part of the dive kick pressure. Because this is where you can neutral jump and slowly let them walk themselves to the corner. Because every time that you dive kick, the opponent can walk back a little bit, depending on what dive kick you do. Heavy kick leaves more of the stage behind them. So screen manipulation is very much part of this. And if you can master screen manipulation, as far as how much room there is behind them, it lets you know what dive kicks you can whiff safely and what dive kicks you can do to hit your opponent and what the risk is behind all of these. Now let's just talk about whiffing dive kicks. Let's say we're mid-screen and our opponent has some of the stage to work with and you want to continue pressuring them. This lets them move the screen and the stage back as well. So it's the same thing with dive kicks, right? And you can dive kick into certain ranges where you may or may not be safe. So being able to super jump at certain positionings matters a lot. So in this situation, we have jump forward, jump forward, delay jump forward into the uh, frame trap, right? And then we have jump forward, jump forward, neutral jump, heavy kick into a option parry. Because you know the heavy kick's going to whiff. So this is where the throw portion comes into play. Knowing that you're going to whiff, or knowing that you can delay and hit your opponent as they're moving backwards if they like to build meter. But not everyone likes to build meter. Some people just like to move or backdash or do whatever. When your opponent is walking back and then, you know, crouching, not whiffing anything really, this is not something that happens very often. At a very high level, everyone has a reason for their choices. So their movement is going to be erratic. It's not going to be just walk back, walk back, walk back, jump forward. At a much lower level, this is what will happen. They'll walk back, see they're almost cornering themselves, and then either dash forward if they have space, or they'll jump forward or super jump forward, because they don't want to corner themselves. So you can slowly walk them down, and you can neutral jump and not dive kick. But you have to understand that this is where the whiffs come in. And whiffing dive kicks in their face is going to allow you to go for high-low throws. It's going to allow you to go for tick throws. And depending on you know the situation, it's going to open up different offense for you. Now, usually, the only way to change this is by super jumping forward or jumping forward when you would normally neutral jump. So being able to change what you're doing depending on your jumps, your jump forwards, your super jumps, your super jump forwards, and your walking is how you combat movement. Now, it's never going to be cut and dry as to how your opponent is going to move. It's always going to be erratic at a very high level. Unless they have a specific spacing that they like to be at because it's good for the matchup. 
i.e. Chun-Li doing crouching medium kick at a specific range. But not every character has this. And there's always going to be decisions to be made where your opponent needs to move back. So understanding how to vary your timing and vary your spacing means that they have to guess between if you want to whiff or if you want to hit in front of them. This means that they have to option parry forward. They have to stop their backward movement. Unless they're committing to blocking. In which case, that's good for you. So the more they move back, the easier it is to corner them, obviously. So even just a simple double walk back into a super jump with dive kick, no matter how far away they are from the corner, you'll be able to uh, either hit your opponent right, like this when they crouch or when they do whatever, try to whiff a button, or you can dive kick in their face and either use it as a tick throw or whiff and get your forward throw or whiff and get your zen potential. So movement's not always a bad thing. And it can be manipulated by knowing how you can move on the screen to force specific spacings where they may or may not be able to fully punish you. So super jump forward from far away is a very important tool because it allows you to manipulate where on the screen that you land. So regardless of how far they move, you're always going to move the same amount of distance. So when we have the full screen like this, if they move forward, sure, they can try to whiff punish with crouching medium kick. But if I do medium kick, dive kick, or heavy kick, dive kick, they can easily whiff punish me with another button, if that's what they want to do. So being able to change the amount of whiffs and the type of whiffs and how you approach makes all the difference. If your opponent is literally just walking across the screen and you can give them room, you can dive kick. But while you're dive kicking, they can walk to the edge of the stage. So movement with forward is important as well. Because walking forward and then super jumping lets you whiff. And it also lets you maintain your ability to hit your opponent as low as, they, as you can. Now you have to guess if they're going to be changing if they're going to walk forward, if they're going to stop walking, and all that stuff. So that's why being able to get in your opponent's head as to what they like to do movement-wise can be quite important. But if you don't walk forward, you're never going to be able to catch your opponent. If you're only dive-kicking, the only way you catch your opponent is when you do heavy kick, dive-kick, heavy kick, dive-kick, heavy kick, dive-kick. So I've done three of them. And then he's cornered. So you can do two normal, a medium, and then a heavy. And then you'll hit your opponent very low. If they continue to just walk back. But the more dive kicks that you do, the more likely it is that your opponent's going to walk forward or jump forward and hit you out of the air. So this is why also being able to walk your opponent down inside of this situation matters a lot. Because you can jump forward, do heavy kick, dive kick, and then do your super jump forward. And it will force that exact same situation, right? As long as you immediately jump, unless your opponent reacts to your whiff with a whiff punish, then you're just going to get in for free. They're forced to parry it. So if we do super jump forward, medium kick, dive kick, and then jump forward, heavy kick, dive kick, this hits at a very, very low angle hard to punish. If we do jump forward heavy kick dive kick and then super jump medium kick dive kick this can force proximity guard and force them to be hit at the same spot. So there's multiple ways to approach your opponent and learning how to deal with your opponent just backing up is all about knowing when to walk knowing when to jump forward dive kick, and knowing when to neutral jump dive kick to manipulate the space of the screen. Like I said before, if you stay at the edge of the screen, your opponent walking back doesn't do anything.
So you have to force your opponent to make decisions. And if they're making decisions, then changing what you're doing dive kick wise can be doubly effective. Or it can hurt you if they're able to read what your next decision is. This was also why it's very rare for Yuns to do more than two dive kicks in a row. Because it just shows that you're willing to jump. And air to airs are not exactly always going to be in your favor. But being able to jump forward, dive kick with heavy kick, and then medium kick puts them in proximity guard so that you can zempo them or you can throw them. So if they're not going to punish you on whiff, make them pay for it. Get the positioning that you want. So normally when your opponent jumps back, they're going to be building space and building meter. When they jump back, they pull the screen to the maximum where you can't, they can't move back again until you move forward. So the same thing happens with dive kicks, right? Eventually, with three or four jumps, they're going to corner themselves. So jumping back once is something that you can understand, and jumping back twice, depending on the positioning on the screen, is something that you can understand. But jumping back three or four times is just risky in a lot of cases. So when you think that they're going to be jumping back and then making a decision to build meter, you can use it as a way of whiff punishing or interrupting with an attack their meter building. However, you can also whiff in their face. But if you dive kick at the incorrect time, you're not going to be able to do anything. You can also just straight jump after them and not dive kick at all. Now, depending on the situation, your opponent is not going to be able to whiff punish you. So you can just jump forward and get a free 2% meter. With dive kicks, if you jump forward dive kick, depending on which one you do, it'll pull the screen a different amount. As you can see here, when I do the light kick dive kick, Ken makes sure that there is still some stage behind him, but there is not much behind me. There's barely about the width of the zero on the super gauge. Now, when I neutral jump heavy kick dive kick, it takes quite a bit for me to get back to the edge of the screen. When I neutral jump medium kick dive kick, it takes about one full uh, two steps in order for me to be at the edge of the screen. So when your opponent is moving strictly backwards or they're jumping backwards, it's a little bit easier to approach because you can build and create the space that you wish to be at. However, the opponent can obviously switch gears and move forward. So being able to understand your opponent's goals is another point as far as understanding their movement and how to adapt your dive kicks and your choices to their movement. But using just dive kicks as a way of approaching your opponent changes in effectiveness based on if they're jumping, if they're walking backwards, if they're just standing in place. Because you have to choose different dive kicks or different jump in options based on these decisions. It's never going to be a one answer equals everything, right? There's no one size fits all. But if you jump forward and then you super jump forward, medium kick, dive kick, depending on when you do your uh, jump forward, or you just do another jump forward heavy kick dive kick, you can punish your opponent. There we go. So if they're just jumping back and building meter, depending on how long the move is that they're building meter with and what type of move it is, you can contest it. 
just like I showed you before. So no matter what, as long as you take those two steps forward, you can maintain the same space. Right now, we're both at about the edge of our stun bars because this is round start space. So if I walk forward three steps or two and a half steps during their jump, it's the same thing. If I neutral jump heavy kick dive kick, we maintain basically the same distance. Specifically, if we super jump, we maintain exactly the same distance. So if we jump forward medium kick dive kick, then we are a little bit closer than we would have been if they jump back. And if they super jump back, obviously they build more space and all that crap. But just as a fundamental rule, chasing your opponent down is never always going to be only about dive kick, dive kick, dive kick. It's going to be about dive kick positioning. I know what their decision is going to be, and then either dive kick in or walk or run away. Because if you don't build, if you don't have the meter to do anything getting in, then there's no reason to be approaching your opponent in a lot of situations. Yen is a battery character, and he needs to be treated as such. So, always going on the off offense is not going to be a good idea. However, knowing when and how to approach when you're getting close to your meter is important. Especially if you can get them closer to the corner, so that when you do manage to activate, they don't have the entire screen to run away. So Ken is set to jump back, build meter, and then jump forward. Now if I do jump forward, light kick, dive kick three times, I may or may not get hit. Right? Depending on if I neutral jump or jump forward or whatever. So this is something that your opponent has to take into consideration when you're approaching them with dive kicks. You can end up in a situation like this where, okay, your opponent just gave you a free 50% meter. Or they put themselves in a very bad situation when they get dash punched. Now, when you are actually going through situations um, and you end up are like whiff whiff and then you end up trying to go for another dive kick, whether it's going to hit or whiff on purpose, doesn't really matter. You have a risk of being air to, anti or air to aired. So, being able to understand when to whiff certain buttons is important. Because both crouching light punch and crouching medium punch look relatively similar. So, if you're constantly uh, dealing with your opponents that like to air to air you, then being able to walk under them when you dive kick, you could punish. But if you are lazy, you can be air to aired relatively easily. And this is a very hard situation to show you just by recording actions from my opponent. Because in certain situations, I can beat them before they air to air me. Unless they do immediate jumping heavy kick. When your opponent is jumping back, you know, building meter, it can be very difficult to know when to dive kick and when not to. Because they can anti-air us something like this, or air to air us like this. So understanding when and how you can approach your opponent based on the, how they like to jump and how they like to deal with the situation means that you can get different options as far as how you want to approach it. So you have the ability to walk under Zempo, you have the ability to walk under whatever, but if you're just doing leg kick, dive kick, leg kick, dive kick, leg kick, dive kick, walking under at the last second and then doing one, two, three, or whiff punishing when they land with crouching medium kick dash punch or something is a very viable option. This is something that's always going to change, right? Where... If I'm doing <coughs> dive kick, dive kick, whiff, dive kick, I could get hit. Dive kick, dive kick, whiff, whiff. Yeah. 
Now this is where Ken also has to understand that he can be pressing buttons as well, with crouching medium kick and all that stuff. So, it's a give and take. And it'll never be the same situation unless you make it that way. Force your opponent into the same situation to see how they deal with it multiple times. It's a very hard concept to showcase, especially with the tools available to us. So, take it for what it is. It's basically reading what you think your opponent wants to do in a specific situation in adapting your dive kicks either with a jump forward instead of a neutral jump or a something that will allow him to or allow you to position the screen how you want it to be it's as simple as that there are also times where your opponent will attempt to air to air you but you will land before them this means that you can catch them with moves like standing medium kick. Or, in situations where they are not able to air to air you, you can crouching medium punch up kicks. If you land far enough ahead. Now another thing is that when you parry, you can actually dive kick in the air. Although, getting this to happen is quite rare. And it's only against specific characters, which I don't know off the top of my head. So it's very situational as to what's going to happen. But it will always force a reset situation on your opponent, in which you land before them, so you get to choose if you meaty or not. can be quite effective. The most basic setup is a cross up in the corner. This happens off of basically any knockdown. Dash punch, forward throw, up kicks. So in these situations, you can force a cross up, whether your opponent quick rises or not. However, the setup for this changes. Depending on your opponent's quick rise timing, depends on how you have to adapt your set play in order to get your cross up. Now if you were to do jump forward light kick dive kick as they're getting up, you'll hit low and you can combo from the front. But as you can see here, you can combo from the back as well. relatively easily, just with a neutral jump. This is also why being able to neutral jump and then combo is very important. So in order to do this, you delay your jump and then either jump forward, medium kick, dive kick, or neutral jump, heavy kick, dive kick. You can also super jump, heavy kick, dive kick. And you can super jump medium kick that kick as well. If you delay, you'll hit in front. But you're not going to be able to combo. So this is a frame trap situation. But getting your cross up is relatively easy against a lot of the cast, specifically when they quick rise. The most common situation is after a dash punch, and then you super jump you make a decision. Or you just neutral jump and make a decision. Now obviously this changes on quick rise. Or not quick rise. There's quite a few ways to make this work on your opponent if they don't quick rise. An example is with light kick dive kick. If we do light kick dive kick, and then we do a neutral jump heavy kick dive kick, we can cross up in combo. However, we can also do light kick dive kick times two and hit from the front. 
You can do light kick, dive kick, and then do a jump forward light kick, dive kick, and hit from the back. Now, all of these are viable options, but what happens when you commit to the jumping heavy kick one, thinking they're going to quick rise? It's extremely hard to cross up Ken mid-screen, specifically when he doesn't quick rise. Now, this can be done, however, by walk forward, walking forward a step, whiffing crouching medium punch, and then doing a delayed jumping forward medium kick dive kick. However, it's very difficult to actually make this cross up for a combo in a similar situation to the one in the corner. However, the situation that I just showed, the one that didn't work in the corner, can work mid-screen, specifically requiring a light punch dash punch in order to make this work, with a jump forward heavy kick dive kick and a neutral jump medium kick dive kick. This is an example of the set play, where the jump forward heavy kick dive kick here is not going to do a whole lot against your opponent unless they quick rise, in which case you'll get this. You'll get a hit, hit against their knees. So this is more viable mid-screen. However, it still requires some risk. There are a lot more characters that don't require as much risk in order to get set play against them. One of those characters is Chun-Li. So while there are a lot more setups that do work against Ken, this is not a video that's meant to showcase all the setups for his particular characters. Those videos will come at a later date. But I will showcase some against Ken and Chun-Li based on Quick Rise and No Quick Rise. So I'll show you one against Ken now for the Quick Rise variation, and then I'll go to Chun-Li. Set play against Ken is very inconsistent, and there's a reason why it's not done very often. Specifically against Quick Rise, it can be very difficult, but we're going to be looking at one off of a up kicks, specifically medium kick up kicks. Now we can whiff a standing medium punch, or a close standing medium punch, and then jump forward, and then do a dive kick. Now as you can see here, if we cross up, the chance of us actually getting the set play is very, very low. Similar to the corner situation. However, it is possible. That one did combo. So while inconsistent, it does work. But there are characters where it's a little bit more consistent. So here's a set play against Ken that requires light kick up kicks. With medium punch, and then you do a super jump forward heavy kick dive kick. Now if you delay your jump, you can hit from the front and combo, just like I did here. But if you do a dive kick, or a, a jump immediately, and then do a dive kick, you can do the heavy kick dive kick and have it cross up. However, it is very inconsistent. <coughs> Let's say you want to keep it simple. You want to do the exact same thing that you did in the corner. Well, it does have a positive result. You hit Ken low enough that you can combo. And this is a great situation to have because it puts you at quite a bit of meter. Now, if you want to stay in front, you can do jump forward, medium kick, dive kick, neutral jump, light kick, dive kick, and hit from the front as well. So there's a lot of ways that this sort of situation can be changed so that it hits from either the front or from the back. But it's not always going to be a cross-up situation. In fact, a majority of the characters, the cross-up situations that you're going to create are going to be very specific. Now, certain characters do have set plays where the cross-up is a guaranteed from the first quick rise. Or you get a cross-up on the no quick rise setup, depending on the character. But Ken is not one of those characters where it's easy to do, as I've already showcased. So in order to showcase what it looks like on a character when this is a little bit easier, we're going to use Chun-Li. <clears throat> in order to show you how deep this can get, we have to look at what happens against Chun-Li against medium kick, light kick, and heavy kick up kicks, right? So we're going to take a look at what happens when we're doing the exact same setup, when she quick rises. Neutral jump, heavy kick, dive kick times two. With the light kick up kicks, we can do Zempo Tension immediately, or we can go high-low throw. Now with the medium kick up kicks, 
We have to dive kick in the opposite direction. Forward, forward, and then we get our Zempo. Or you get high low throw. And then off of heavy kick up kicks, depending on how far or how much you delay your last dive kick, depends on if you whiff in front, if you whiff behind, or you can even hit in front, depending on if you delay enough. And that was a poor decision because I could have comboed into crouch and medium punch. But, just like that. So the same situation has varying outcomes depending on what upkicks you use. So your opponent has to understand what upkicks you use and then know what your options are. And that's not always easy. So let's take a, a look at how to cross Chun-Li up off of upkicks when she quick rises off of each one of these upkicks. We'll start with heavy kick. Neutral jump or super jump, medium kick, dive kick, and then jump forward, medium kick, dive kick. This crosses up. Now if we're to use medium kick, dive kick instead, we have neutral jump, heavy kick, dive kick, jump forward, medium kick, dive kick. And this allows us to cross up. Now let's take a look at the light kick variation. Jump forward, heavy kick, dive kick, neutral jump, heavy kick, dive kick. This will either cross up, or it will allow you to whiff on the opposing side of the opponent. So there's a way that you can cross Chun-Li up on quick rise from all three of these up kicks. There's actually multiple ways that you can cross her up. So your opponent has a lot that they have to memorize. And also, you have a lot to memorize in order to make best use of these. However, there are overlapping setups for quick rise and no quick rise. So when we do our normal set play, we end up far away from Chun-Li. Super jump, medium kick, dive kick. Forward jump, medium kick, dive kick. However, you can realize that you're whiffing for your second one and then follow up with a jump forward heavy kick, dive kick to cross up. So this is the only one that I'm going to show you for Chun-Li because, quite frankly, there's way too many. If your opponent doesn't quick rise, you can morph that exact same set play, the one that I showed you for the quick rise setup, and just add on a little bit of extra. And then you can force the cross up. Now you can modify this however you want, as long as the first part is the same. If we do a neutral jump medium kick dive kick, as opposed to a jump forward heavy kick dive kick, we stay in front. And we hit at her knees. We can also do a, uh, whatchamacallit, a uh, light kick dive kick in order to whiff in front. And then go for Zempo Tension. Now, obviously I didn't do the forward jump medium kick there, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just the concept. So there are plenty of ways that you can modify all of these set plays as well to have different outcomes based on the original choice that you have. Either you can hit from the front, you can whiff in front, you can whiff behind. There's all sorts of different choices that you have. And that's what makes set play so deadly. But because set play is so encompassing and there's way too many setups that can be shown on the entire cast, I will have to make a separate video for each character specifying what situation certain set play can be used. However, dive kicks aren't the only part of these set play. They just are a major portion of ones against bigger body characters, which can allow for cross-up dive kicks to, be, to happen with ease. Now let's talk about the characters that you can't cross up in the corner. For some of these characters, like the twins, you can cross them up in very specific situations. As you can see, my character is the one with the black hat. I'm on my side of the screen, as in the left corner. If I back throw my opponent and they quick rise, I can get into my corner. However, if I forward throw and I quick and I do the same thing, they will not be in 
or they will not have the ability to be crossed up. If they're in their own corner, you cannot cross them up at all. Although you do hit very, very low to the ground. So this is something that exists for both twins, Yun and Yang. They both have this exact same interaction, where they can back throw on the same side that they are the player, as in player one can back throw into player one corner and player two can back throw into player two corner. And the reason why I swapped from OE to show these things is because OE, when I do this and I go for a dive kick, will allow me to cross up for some unknown reason in training mode, but not in practice, which is very weird. The only other characters that you cannot cross up in the corner are Remy, Ibuki. Neither of these characters can have the back throw situation work either. It also doesn't work on Q. You can't cross him up, regardless of how he gets in the corner. So it's twins outside of their own corner from a back throw only, and then Ibuki, Remy, and Q. Every other character can be crossed up in the corner. So now let's talk about risk reward. In the situation that we're going to be talking about, it's mostly going to be the situation where your opponent gets the frame trap. Now what I mean by that is that your opponent gets the situation where if you do anything except for block, you end up getting hit. Now, in this situation, as long as you tap forward before you throw, Ken will be able to punish you. Right? Now, in this exact situation, you can also do it off of down. So it's much easier to encompass standing light punch and crouching light kick. However, your opponent can do close standing medium kick and close standing medium punch as a way to force you to parry high. In this exact situation, when we get the frame trap, if we do one, two, three, it can be high and low parried, as I just showed you. But there are things that can only be high parried, such as standing medium punch. So in this exact situation, I try to down parry in order to get my back throw, thinking that he's going to be doing one, two, three, or he's going to be doing crouching leg kick, leg kick, or something. And this down parry covers both options. However, forward parry instead will work. But if we down parry, we get hit by the target combo. If we try to throw, we also get hit by the target combo. If we try to DP, we get hit by the target combo. Unless we time it 100% perfectly. So, if the opponent hits us lower though, and we try to input DP, we get hit. So unless you are 100% sure that your opponent hits you at a position where they're going to be going for the frame trap setup, either the high-low, then doing the dragon punch is going just going to get you hit. But if you are, then the DP can put that situation in Ken's favor. Now in this exact same situation, if we block and we go for throw, the low beats us. If we attempt to go high with a high button, the low beats us. And if we attempt to uh, forward parry, the low beats us. So the only way to deal with this is to down parry. And the most common way to deal with this is down parry back throw. So your opponent has a 50-50 chance of getting you. 
if you do standing medium punch or crouching light kick if they opt to parry but <coughs> they're not always going to parry and the situations where they do parry doing one two three guarantees them that they're going to be successful so post dive kick mixing things up is very important specifically with the frame trap setup and you have three very good options four if you want to count one two three which can also be delayed and you can option parry as well so there's a, a lot of ways that you can force your opponent to make specific decisions and then you can adjust what you're doing based on those choices but until they prove that they're willing to take those risks there's no reason to actually go through and make those changes the risk before reward behind whiffing can be relatively good or in Yun's favor depending on the situation now unfortunately if your opponent can read your whiffs you can be up shit's creek now what I mean by that is that simply by walking back and pressing standing medium punch your opponent can hit you as you are falling now they can also hit you with target combo if they step in at the correct time but it's very difficult and not every character has ways that they can punish this effectively but Ken as an example is one of these characters he also can take a step back and then do a crouching medium kick into a DP however if he does it too early then you can whiff punish him now if he parries this then you're going to be hitting low enough where only very specific things are going to work in this situation he can basically only throw or go for target combo but target combo needs to be hit at a very specific height otherwise your opponent is not going to be able to target combo you so your attempts at dive kicking in if they opt to move forward as opposed to backward um, are relatively good the risk reward the closer they are or when you hit them that low is entirely in Yun's favor even on parry against the majority of the cast and very few characters can actually punish this consistently at least into high damage so going through this exact situation the risk reward is actually still in Yun's favor in my opinion because whisk can lead to throws they can lead to zempo and they can lead to highs or lows depending on what the opponent is doing at the time and how they are actively using their time on the screen but if they're you know whiffing crouching medium punch their only real choice here is far stand medium punch as a way of stopping your dive kicks and this is a confirm into a super if they have super but if your opponent doesn't show that they are capable of doing this <clears throat> I apologize then uh, there's not really a whole lot of ro risk reward involved but they also have to time this perfectly otherwise you're gonna be able to block whether they do the far standing medium punch or they do the crouching medium kick they can also do sweep as long as they're hitting you as you're landing as a trip guard but as soon as you land you can block so as long as you are actually whiffing and not just putting them in a position where they can oh I'm going to crouch and medium kick you as you land then you know it's gonna be a little bit easier but uh, if I don't move back as Ken in this position I just get hit as I start to try to whiff punish my opponent's dive kick but as soon as I move back then I can whiff punish or I should say trip guard because it's not even really a whiff punish it's a trip guard again not every character has these and not every character can do a whole lot of damage off of them some characters get sweep like Chun-Li or something um, but there's not a whole lot of situations where you can't 
uh, deal with the situation. Chun Li can do also, you know, walk back crouching medium kick as well. Um, but whiffing that close on Chun Li can be a risk, specifically when she has super, because you don't want to, you know, take that super. It's a little bit more risky on Ken because he has a, a lot more ways to get damage off of just a crouching medium kick. But on characters that don't really get all that much out of this, um, you can do it with impunity. And it's really based on matchup. Now, I can't go into full details on all the matchups as far as what dive kicks can be whiffed when. It's all based on what your opponent shows you you're willing to get, or they are willing to let you get away with. And the chess game of movement and where you want to be actually whiffing your dive kicks matters a lot too. Because they can just be air to airing you as well if you're doing multi whiff dive kicks like that. In most of these situations, you're only going to be doing one dive kick, which is harder to read. It's a lot easier to read multiple dive kicks. So if you're, you know, just doing one dive kick, it's a little bit harder to whiff punish. Specifically because you can just hold up. And unless Ken walks forward and has super, he's not going to whiff punish you into much. Because his DP is not going to hit from that range. So it's not really something you have to worry about. Obviously, unless he has super. So the same thing goes for the rest of the cast. Whiffing one dive kick at a range where they can technically trip guard you isn't all that big of a deal. As long as they're not getting a whole lot off of it. But this is a use at your own risk sort of situation. But you're always going to have to whiff in order to get in on your opponent. You're always going to have to jump. You're always going to have to make decisions. So there's always going to be a risk reward attached to everything that you do. Just because you can get blown up for it if your opponent is playing perfectly doesn't mean it's not a viable strategy. So with a perfect dive kick, what are your risk reward? Well, if they parry you, it can be relatively easy to punish. Now, certain characters are going to have an easier time punishing than others. If this is truly perfect, this means that they're going to have to take a step back, or they're going to be taking a forward step, and then they're going to be blocking. Now, in this situation, the only way to deal with this is with a red parry. So basically you're guaranteed to get your pressure, whether you do crouching like kick, like kick, standing medium punch, crouching medium punch, etc. You're guaranteed your pressure. You're guaranteed your follow-up. You're guaranteed your meter for the blocked moves. So in these situations, you get your meter and you're pushed away. But you're still in range to make decisions. When your opponent red parries even if they try to back throw in this situation as an example they may not be able to do it depending on how close you are when you actually get your uh, one two three so if you just input one two three instead of just inputting you know it slowly they're still going to have to parry twice And if they don't parry twice, they're not going to be able to do a whole lot. But it forces them to red parry. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to punish. Now, although they can't throw you, they can punish you. So certain characters are going to get quite a bit from this. 
Fire Stand Medium Punch from Ken. And then Crouching Medium Kick from Ken. Other characters will have different things that they can do. Yun will have, you know, target combo. Uh, medium Punch, Fierce Punch, Fierce Punch. He'll have Crouching Medium Kick. Chun-Li will have Crouching Medium Kick Super. Dudley will have Standing Heavy Kick into, you know, EX Machine Gun Blow. And all that stuff. So the only risk is if your opponent shows that they can red parry. Now, if they can't red parry it, or they're not willing to take that risk, then you're free to just rush them down with proper dive kick spacing no matter what. Unless they are going to be parrying them and punishing you for those. But if they show that they're opting to parry, they're not looking to walk back and press buttons, or they're not looking to whiff punish them in most of these situations. So, when you get the parry, and you can punish. You're not looking for that walk back standing medium punch. Now in this situation, as you can see, it's a lot easier for me to get my standing medium punch when he whiffs in front of me. Because he's going for one, two, three immediately. So all of Ken's choices, or all of your opponent's choices, depending on what character they're playing, are always going to be changing. And in order to deal with this perfectly spaced dive kick, they need to either be parrying the dive kicks, or they need to be red parrying the follow-ups. Otherwise, you can use them as tick throws, you can use them as forced ways to get meter, you can use them as um, setups for universal overheads, you can use them for a plethora of different things. But they do have to take risks in order to deal with them. If you don't take risks in this game, there are very little reward. Some characters can be played with lower risk reward than others, but a character like Hugo, as an example, will need to attempt to red parry SPD this. Otherwise, he's just going to get screwed. When doing dive kicks, the most common thing that you may see is just whiffing buttons in a neutral dive kick. Now, however, at the very highest end of play, you'll almost always see movement in between when they do their choices. It's a lot easier just to react to a neutral jump than it is to react to your opponent walking back and then jumping forward. Same thing with walking back and then neutral, or walking forward and then neutral jumping. Or walking forward and jumping forward. There's a lot more that your opponent has to think about when you make your movement. So walking is a very important part of proper dive kick movement. So when you are doing your dive kicks, just doing a single dive kick is not going to have as much effect in some scenarios as when you take a step forward or a step back. Not necessarily a micro step to get into a specific range so that you can hit your opponent, but rather an entire step so that you can... What I mean by this is that if you're just neutral jumping or super jumping, it's a little bit easier to react to your choice. Whereas if you walk back or you're whipping buttons, then walk back and then do your neutral jump or walk back and then jump forward and make a decision. Not only are you changing the angle at which you, your opponent may think you're going to approach, but you're also changing the positioning on the screen. So certain options become available that may not have previously been available. This also relies heavily on how your opponent decides that they want to occupy the screen. If they like to move a lot, moving with them is very important. If they're moving backwards, walking forward, or if they're walking forwards, walking backwards, and being able to change your momentum and your decision making on a dime can make quite a difference. Going from jump back, or jump back to jump forward, or jump back to neutral jump, or walk back to jump forward, can set up all sorts of different situations. This means that being able to eyeball what your actual outcome is going to be, or guesstimate, is a very important skill to have. Movement is also very important, specifically in situations where you may not want to hit your opponent. So being able to move forward and then jump in, 
as long as you're not afraid of being whiff punished in certain situations, can be a way to change up how you're approaching your opponent. The same thing with walking backward. Walking backward is going to make certain dive kicks whiff. Even in situations where you're in range of their decision, just walking backward puts you out of range of this. So if they want to poke you, you have to, or they have to move forward. So taking that step back and then neutral jumping will allow it, you to see if they poked and then whiff punish in some cases. Basically, it's just that any movement that you're doing changes the situation. It may not change it all that much, but it's multiple things that your opponent needs to react to. They need to react to your forward movement or your backward movement to see if you're neutral jumping or if you're jumping forward. Walking back to neutral jump is something that you'll see a lot of yuns do. Specifically at ranges where they know their opponent will want to jump at them. So they can anti-air with buttons or where they can just simply neutral jump, see what their opponent does, and then either dive kick when they think it's safe or fill the air with either neutral jump heavy punch or neutral jump heavy kick. The same thing happens when they are walking back and jumping forward. In certain matchups, it's better to press buttons. In other matchups, it's better to press dive kick. And this is also a way that you can see how your opponent wishes to approach. And one of the ways that you can make that whiff under your opponent as they jump at you dive kicks work. Without movement, you become too repetitive. It may become too easy to read what you're doing. Although, going from button pressing to immediately jumping forward or button pressing to neutral jump immediate dive kicks can be hard to read and hard to see. It can still be reacted to. So can your movement, but your movement changes the screen position, the background a shift, and it also may change your opponent's options, what they feel comfortable doing. So no matter what you're doing, a slight movement can be a way to force your opponent to think about what your next choice is. In situations where you might be walking forward to go into poke range, walking forward and then going for a whiff dive kick, or walking forward and going for a dive kick that hits, is another thing they have to worry about. They don't have to just worry about you counter poking their decision or them trying to counter poke you as you're coming in. Dive kick opens up a plethora of opportunities to go and change your spacing before and after dive kicks, especially after neutral jump light kick then. Repositioning is important. So being able to add movement into before and after your dive kicks can help quite a bit, especially in situations where you only want to do one dive kick, you may want to do a second, but you're hesitant to just go for it. Dive kicks inside of Ganagen don't really gain anything frame data wise. The only exception to this is a medium kick dive kick, which now becomes six frames. The usage of dive kicks, however, becomes a little bit different because of how they interact with the normals inside of Ganagen. When you are inside of Ganagen and you do things like a knockdown, if you manage to cross your opponent up, you can actually combo with standing medium kick and then dash under and continue your combo, either with a palm, a standing medium kick, or whatever. This is something that Yun does not have outside of Ganagen. Doesn't combo, because standing medium kick gains, or I should say loses, startup frames or frames until it gets to its startup. So you gain the ability to do new things, or things become much more potent when you are inside of Ganagen. One of the most important things is how it actually influences your frame trap situation. Now in a situation where you're going to be blocking extremely high, or getting hit extremely high, you may still be able to throw your opponent. But in situations where it's just above your chest, 
where Yun is, you know, positive, or not positive, where he's even, or even negative one in some cases, he still has the advantage with Crouch Light Kick, because it's two frames startup. So as we see here, if I crouch and I block, I'm blocking where I am zero, right? He's hitting me right in the chest, or right above it. If I take a micro step forward, and I try to throw, when I block immediately throwing, I end up getting hit by the crouching light kick. So using throw purely as a defense against post dive kick situations isn't an option. You're forced to parry. Now, when you end up getting hit with this, it's a blue parry, unless you are a little bit further back. Unless, then it's a red parry. Just like that. But, your opponent can mix things up by using standing medium punch instead. Just like I've shown you before, standing medium punch is a viable option. And standing medium punch, in this exact situation, loses one frame. So instead of being four frame startup, it's three frame startup. So it's just as pop possible for your opponent to go high-low as it is for them to go low-low. So going for an immediate low block after you high block is the most common situation. So this is why in situations where you are able to get this um, sort of frame trap, it becomes even more possible for you to get tick throws, as in tick into Zempo tension. So your opponent has to be very careful as to what your decisions are. Yun also opens up quite a bit of options as far as his approach from dive kicks because of his ability to carry normals with standing medium punch after he lands. Inside of Ganajin, you have the ability to carry. Standing heavy punch here doesn't hit unless I carry cancel it with standing medium punch. Now this is incredibly important when understanding how to approach your opponent while you're inside of Ganajin. Because a majority of the time it's not just purely going to be to dive kick into their face so that you can get that high-low throw situation. You also can make use of the Kara standing heavy punch and Kara crouching medium kick being useful in very specific situations. So that example right there is what is known as a show confirm, or what I dubbed a show confirm. Um, it's something that he does more often than other Yuns, which is crouching, or Kara crouching medium kick into uh, Kara standing heavy punch. So, when you do this, you end up getting a two-hit combo. And you can either go into Daipon loop afterward, you can go for a shoulder, or you can go for forward pierce if you're close enough to the corner to go for your combo. Now, these are just a couple examples, but let's show how this works as far as the usefulness with dive kick. In this situation, most people would do forward fierce, or a lot of players that are not comfortable with carry cancels would do forward fierce, because it can launch your opponent, specifically if you're closer to the, the corner, like this. But, that's not always the best idea. This is a situation where you can go into Daipon loop by doing your Kara standing heavy punch immediately. As opposed to just doing land heavy punch. Now you can also do Kara crouching medium kick and go right into that as well. And finish your combo. So when you're trying to, you know, force your way in, doing multiple whiff light kick dive kicks is something that's going to happen quite a bit. And you always want to be doing this at a, at a range where you are outside of standing medium punch hitting. So if your opponent is fully pushed into the corner, this range is about right here. Right to the right of the... Uh, or right in the middle of the time bar. 
or stun bar, I should say. But at the very, very edge of the stun bar, this will whiff. So when your opponent is cornered and you're not in their face, being able to whiff and then go high or low and continue your combo if you're successful or continue pressure is very important. So if we take a look at this situation from something that happens quite a bit, where you get a throw or a knockdown or something, or you just straight are in the corner, you get your knockdown, you don't want to risk it, you back off, you activate, right? In this situation, two light foot, two jump forward, immediate light kick dive kicks will put you at the range for this. It also puts you at the range for the Karakrachi medium kick, right? So there's a lot of ways that you can approach your opponent from this distance. You can read, jump, and then go for a heavy dive kick. Or you can force a jump forward uh, medium kick dive kick where you'll land close enough for a crouching medium kick to whiff and standing medium punch to whiff. So at this exact spacing, uh, the standing medium punch inside of the Kara heavy punch is not necessary. When you're at a range where the Kara Crouching Medium Kick will hit, but Standing Medium Punch will not, Far Standing Heavy Punch will hit at that range. You don't need to bother with the Kara. This is often when you'll see Yuns go for Shoulder as opposed to Daipon Loop or something like that, because that same range can restrict the Standing Medium Punch usage. So you can manipulate your way in with Neutral Jump light kick dive kick and a neutral jump medium kick dive kick as well and obviously you can go right for the forward medium uh, heavy punch if you so choose but you have to understand how to properly follow that up uh, which is in another video of mine there's plenty of ways that you can approach your opponent and understanding that neutral jump heavy kick dive kick as well will also allow you to get in on your opponent. And you can either Kara cancel crouching medium kick or you can uh, opt for Kara canceling crouching leg kick depending on the distance. And that was off of the medium kick dive kick. So when you're trying to abuse the fact that your opponent needs to make a decision, you want to be making a decision that is hard to react to. Shoulder is something that you can see coming relatively. So even though it's a double parry, it is something that I've had happen to me where I've had it parried. So if you're constantly trying to make decisions, it should be varying types of dive kicks or abusing the fact that Kara normals can get you con confirms. So let's take a look at what happens when our opponent blocks this. So we're going to be taking a look at the same exact situation. Neutral jump medium kick and then Kara crouching medium kick. Or neutral jump medium kick, Kara standing heavy punch. We'll be looking at a couple ways that we can force our way in off of these being blocked. I have an entire other video on how to get in inside of Ganagen from far away, but I'll do a quick overview on what happens when your opponent blocks specific things. So let's start with Kara standing heavy punch. 
if they block Kara sending heavy punch, you can continue your pressure with Kara standing light kick or Kara crouching medium kick. And you can continue your pressure. Now, depending on the character, you're going to get more mileage out of other setups. Because Kara crouching medium kick doesn't push you back very far, right? So, however, you can Kara standing, uh, crouching light kick. And that allows you to just literally walk up and go for your Zempo if you so choose. You get the same high-low throw. Then we have forward fierce. So we have fierce, uh, fierce, forward fierce. You can either walk and then go for different choices, or you can carry cancel your standing light kick. But this requires very specific timing. Now, you obviously have other options as well. You can go for, you know, Kara crouching medium kick into shoulder. You can go for uh, Kara crouching medium kick forward fierce. There's a lot of ways that you can apply pressure still, but you may not be able to force your way in for your Zempo tension. Now, in situations off of Kara crouching medium kick, you can either do another Kara crouching medium kick and then walk standing light kick. Or you can do walk standing medium punch or something like that. Oops. There's all sorts of ways that you can get in after this. Because after Kara crouching medium kick, you can tap forward and actually force a block with far standing medium punch. Now if you would do this, you can actually get in with a Kara crouching leg kick. So, oops. The important part here is that you actually let yourself recover from the standing medium punch. Otherwise, you won't be pushed back far enough for the Kara crouching light kick to work. And then obviously you have uh, Kara crouching medium kick into shoulder. But it's very difficult. Because you actually have to hold the medium kick button down until you see the shoulder start. So this means you have to do either heavy kick or medium kick, or a medium punch, sorry. Heavy punch or medium punch. Now getting in after this is relatively difficult as well. Specifically because unless your opponent is crouching, you won't be able to go for like Kara Zempo or something like that. But after shoulder, you're actually in Kara range as well. So you can go for a Kara low, or you can take a micro step forward and then go for far standing fierce, or sorry, medium punch. And you can cancel that into far standing fierce and go from there. Or you can simply just go for medium punch, fierce punch, or micro step forward, crouching medium kick, forward fierce or something. You can also just have balls and walk up and Zempo. You get the idea. There's quite a few ways that you can actually approach your opponent off of both of these ways of getting in. So it's important to note that because dive kicks can be used to set this up, it gives you a bit of wiggle room as far as how you, far you need to approach your opponent before they need to make a decision on how they want to deal with you. And that exact spacing is right under the timer. 
as soon as you get under the timer, your opponent has to worry about this, and they have to worry about this. Now, you can also just Kara Crouching Light Kick after your Kara Crouching Medium Kick, if you're fast enough. So, there's a lot of ways that you can get in relatively safely from this distance. And Dive Kicks set this distance up incredibly easy, especially from far away.